Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Blame It on the Boogie podcast. We back. This is back. episode back. number 25. That'll be a two and a nickel. Two and a nickel. Uh, back and better than ever. And as always, we are joined by the one and only Antoine D-double-O-Z-E Williams from Florissant, Missouri. Give it to me. Give it to me. Yeah. D, the one and only Dorian. D almighty Brown, the wonder mouse from Richmond, California. <laughs> and man, ladies and gentlemen, we got your boy, Dante Geechee Dan Nash, back with us from Phoenix, Arizona. And of course, you have me, Rod D, right here in the Detroit, Michigan. We want to thank y'all for continuing to stick with us, even though we've we've had a lot of issues the last few weeks. Uh, haven't been able to to come to you, but you know we back now. We ready to go, have our fun, do our thing. We all ready, y'all ready? We, we ready? We ready? We ready? We gonna make this right. easy. We gonna get right into this, starting with the Wonder Mouse. Don't tell us about what we talked about the last time we saw. Our- Let's see. All right, so. The last time, which seems obviously so long ago, because this stuff I'm going to talk about, y'all going to be like, what? How long ago was that? All right. So uh, to recap, the last couple of what we talked about two weeks ago, we talked about Coco Golf uh, winning the U.S. Open, <laughs> which we was yeah. already late on in the first place. <laughs> so we even later. With Don't, worry about, Don't worry about all that. Don't worry about all that. Don't worry about all that. We talked about the U.S. the U.S. men and women sweeping the four by one. Um, the base we talked about the baseball wild card races. Now we in the now we in the championship <laughs> series. <laughs> um, we talked about the Harbaugh suspension. I think he done been back what four games now. Two weeks. Since last- <laughs> we talked about this. Um, we games. talked about uh, Mel, the firing the firing of Mel Tucker from Michigan State, which is still and little male. Don't get about little male. Yeah, and, and, and little male, little male getting spanked. Uh, Millie, <laughs> Millie. We talked about. Coach Prime and the Buffs, who we're going to end up talking about again. Um, we talked about A.A. Ron being out for the season. Shoot, now they talking about him coming back because he's healing so fast. <laughs> that ain't going to happen, we talk- man. Um, yeah, we work. talked about Taylor Swift in Kansas City. They ain't even talking about that no four more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They ain't even talking about that no more. <laughs> Um, we talked about the Dolphins blowing out the Broncos, but we're going to talk about the Broncos again today. Um, we talked about the WNBA semifinals. Mm. Well, now it's game three of the finals, and it's it's time. 345 up. left. <laughs> uh, we talked about um, the world, the world back, talking about the FIBA World Cup, and uh, has the world caught up with the United States in hoops. And we talked about Dane going to the Bucks. And about Harden still being in Philly. And that's going to be another topic that we're going to get into today as well. Talk about James Harden. He's always so, a good thing to talk about. Now that, now that we've been so far behind. Let's right, Rob, before we catch everybody up. Right, before we get started, I want to know when when you can uh, when can you hire us some uh, makeup artists to hook us up like Shannon Sharp? You know what, man? Um, <laughs> that's in the budget for next year. This year we can. We, we just didn't have enough for the budget this year for the for the makeup artist. But next year, <laughs> next year we're gonna make sure we got we got that Shannon look going on. Oh, well, especially you dudes. I'll make yeah. sure you got the, that Shannon look going on. Give us a Mary Kay or something, right? I mean, you, you know, what I don't know what the budget looking like, but we should be able to you, 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 you didn't make your plea, man. You didn't make your plea. You know, we're you know, we supposed to say hey, I don't need no makeup, right? Follow us, like us. Uh, what's yeah, the other follow stuff? Us, like us, give the button, us money. subscribe, hit that subscribe, subscribe. button, and subscribe. then of course, send those the money. Send me some money, right. man. Come on, subscribe, subscribe, <laughs> send those that money so we can go and get that makeup going on. That money, we're gonna get a makeup artist, she's gonna swing by and put some makeup <laughs> on her, uh, uh, D's forehead and on my jaw, <laughs> my, my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> gonna give a uh, Dante uh, 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 some uh, lip gloss uh, stuff, you know. 
<laughs> What's that stuff Shannon had on? Man, I don't know what Shannon, Shannon had on. He had on rouge. He had on uh, eyeliner. He had on all. Yeah, all the stuff on, man. I like I'm he like, had what? on too much is what it sounds like. Man, man he had, bro. He looked Hold like on. he was uh, ready to lay down in his coffin. That's what he looked here like. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He just wanted to be tampered now. That's what's going on. Right? Going going on. Yeah, he going on vacation. Now he want to be pampered. Up. Oh, I Hold see. Up. I see it now. Uh-uh. I got. I got. I got to let everybody else see it. I got to let everybody else see it. Right about to put it up there. So, so this is going to it up. You got it. There right. y'all go. Woo! Yeah, I see Shannon. Look like a whole different person. Yeah, I see Shannon. Uh, uh, uh. They, they caked it on there. That's AI. No, that ain't no AI. That's a pound of foundation. And what, what happened? What happened it's to Shannon's closed. neck? <laughs> and it closed Shay Shay. Get on what the uh, what you got? It closed Shay Shay. Man, what's wrong with his lip? Oh, that's like the fake Kanye picture. Look at, look at the headline. First take viewers left shocked by Shannon Sharp's casket ready makeup on live TV. <laughs> oh, he says up. it was it talking about it was a little heavy. It was a little heavy. <laughs> oh, that's boy, that's that guy looks good. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Hey. Shamar Moore. Does this guy look like he need any makeup, y'all? On that shine. Who needs makeup? Him or his or his monkey? Oh man, this like, guy like wants Marcus makeup. Said, right? Come on, y'all. That's, that's the sexiest man in the world from the neck up, right? Get in there. Head. He's talking about Shannon Sharp. Look at this guy, y'all. See, I, I, I had a whole lot of jokes about dudes playing with his monkey. I believe <laughs> that's that what alone. happens when dudes go on vacation, everybody. He <laughs> won't leave that alone. Gonna make up his head shine. <laughs> you, you, wasn't, you wasn't spanking the monkey, were you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. He was not going to be <laughs> <He's not laughs> <on that. laughs> you said who had that. that song we're talking about me and that monkey? Monkey got his tongue out at his head. Monkey. Everything what you gonna do with that monkey? What yeah. you gonna do with that monkey? Uh uh. uh, uh hey, don't do know what the monkey the monkey, tongue. Tongue. the monkey Look at the monkey tongue, y'all. Hey, hold up. Like, I'm gonna lick that shit. Like go back talking. to that picture. Go back to that picture, man. <laughs> Go back to the picture. Where the picture? I hope that's his tail. <laughs> <laughs> there, you, there you go, Ryan. There Ryan go. <laughs> hey, man. Let's, let's, come on, dudes. All right, all right. That's so crazy. How did you take your monkey sport. on the plane with you, dudes? You got to explain hey, that to our viewers. Y'all ain't going to be dissing bubbles now. I, how did you I, get I that from customers? How did you I take go? your pet monkey? That's bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so y'all y'all with the show. All right, we didn't get five minutes into the show. Y'all got all, all hey, let's the get back to the show. All right, yeah, we done hijacked the hijack. All the joke. I'm gonna make bubbles. Everybody bite, back, y'all, back. <laughs> now, what was not a joke is the WNBA finals with the Las Vegas Aces going against my New York Liberty. Um, right now, as we speak, they're in game four, uh, four out of five. The Liber- uh, Aces are up two games to one right now, and this game is going back and forth uh, with two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Uh, they haven't shown the score. It's 66-64 right now. Okay. Like I said, it's going back and forth. The Aces are up. It's Oh, come on. Anescu just threw the ball away. Uh, so it goes back to the Aces. Yeah, I'm, 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 if, when I start fussing, don't, don't please overlook me. <laughs> Because they they hurt me, I I, I you know I, I was uh, born into the Liberty fandom because they play from uh, in the same stadium as my New York Knicks. That's my Knicks uh, sister team. So poor you know, poor New York Liberty. Uh, oh, at least at least I can give, me, <laughs> give, me, give me one one team that might be able to win a win a uh, championship Are this they year. Owned by the same person, uh, Madison Square Gardens. Okay. Yep, who is the Golden. same owner? Dolan, mm-hmm. yeah. We didn't, we, we uh, my bad, I forgot. We, we, we weren't supposed to say his name. We, we right. talk, yeah, we said we were talking about him. But right now, the um, two minutes left. The, the Liberty and the Aces, they, it's actually been, no, truth be told, the WNBA season has actually been pretty uh, uh, pretty nice this year. 
Um, you had it, it goes to that discussion about super teams because there was a lot of super teams in the WNBA this year. Uh, do you guys like when teams ha- have these super teams? Anybody saying that? Anybody gonna say that? I'm gonna sit there and just look. I think the super teams the are good. yeah. In the WNBA, this is my thing about it. It's like when people talk about super teams. Okay, mm-hmm. when have it, it? To me, it's just about the ability of these teams to get the best players on their team. Mm-hmm. There, you know, as much as we hoop, ain't none of us ever walked in the gym and didn't want to select the five best players that were in the gym. We didn't go in there looking for. Oh, uh, uh-uh, no, nah, nah, uh, I want you. You ain't that good. Uh, you okay. I'm going to pick you. No, we wanted to get five of the best people that you could get on the team. And if they call that a super team, well, they call it a super team. Um, but uh, for me, I think it's just who can acquire that kind of talent. So it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't bother me. I'm, 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 you know, as we were all wrestling fans growing up, Ric Flair, if you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Don't be yeah, mad. Yeah. Don't hate the players. Hate the game. Go beat and his, them. Woo! And his, historically, you always had, you know, you always had super teams. You know, Celtics with the big three, Bird, Parrish, McHale. Uh, shoot, the Lakers had uh, Kareem, Magic, wow. Worthy. Uh, even they had Bob McAdoo, Cooper. You know, so they, there's, there's always been super teams. I think it's good. It's good for the sport. So, so this year, um, like I said, in the, in the WNBA, you had the Aces, you had the Liberty, you had the Sun, um, and uh, that was really it. Nah, it's one more team, but anyway, those are the top three, and all of them, you know, <laughs> through the through free agency, were able to, um, you know, get the better players. And like like Dee said, you know, if it goes to the management, if you're able to, you know, each team, each team, well, in WNBA and the NBA, they have salary caps. So if you're able to manage the salary cap better than the other team so so be it um you have to get lucky a lot of times um i don't know on on these so-called super teams it's usually at least one player that's homegrown and then they go out and try to trade for the other ones or whatever uh so you gotta get gotta get a little lucky like uh and i'm not trying to get into my w my nba talk yet but like phoenix did you know phoenix was able to have uh, uh booker and then go out and get KD and uh, Beal. So we'll we'll see how that works moving forward. But uh, I'm with you, D. The, the super team, you know, if, if that's what you uh, – except for the ones in Miami. I hate LeBron James in Miami. That, that was horrible. But, <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't have – I really don't have a, a huge problem with it. Uh, it it, it makes, makes more viewership. It, 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 it makes – that was about to say. It makes for, for a better – product um for people to actually watch and view and go see because you know whether you love it or hate it it, it, you know you know as much as much as i hate it you know i would love to go see i would have loved to go see uh i didn't get to see the big three when they played um but i would have loved to go see all three of them play together i'm going to see the suns this year for that specific reason Mm -hmm. uh that's my take on that um so hopefully the Liberty, who's down by one with a minute and some odds, uh, some change to go, will come back and win this game and send it to a game five. Uh, y'all hear me fussing before the end of this show as to how that went. Uh, also, in the playoffs, push the button, Rod. There you go. Or uh, baseball. We got the MLB playoffs right now. And it is, well, like D said, you know, before it was the wild cards. The last time we talked. <laughs> Now it's the uh, the championship series. Uh, Doran, you want to give us a little rundown on the, on the baseball since that's your, your thing? Well, actually, it's probably more Dante thing than mine. Oh, that's right, Dante is, is the, the resident baseball expert. Yeah, you know he's he's the base he's the baseball cat. I know, I know he's been paying attention, especially since the Diamondbacks are in the playoffs. I know. Dante don't want to speak. He's Which just is intriguing, there. fellas. So it's all about range. First and foremost, I don't know, am I on mute? Maybe a delay. But first and foremost, again, it's about range. 
No one out here, and that's the Arizona fans, were truly even following the Diamondbacks until they made to see the Diamondbacks make the Warriors because of ratings. So this is actually perfect to make sure you have Philly from the East Coast and whichever team comes out of Texas, it doesn't matter. Houston's a defending champion. So as long as the Diamondbacks aren't in the World Series, baseball wins. That's what's going on in baseball. Did that uh, curl would probably be the rookie of the year in baseball? They had a great story with a rebuilt team of what you can do. Nobody expected that. But when it's all said and done, the Phillies are going to win. They're going to go to the World Series. It'll probably be Texas. They're going to succumb Houston. It would be great to see Dusty get a chance to defend himself. That's a bigger story. But it's about ratings and that story. Dusty against the Phillies. Uh, the Phillies against Texas. Or it's Texas with their finally in the World Series. That's what's going on in baseball. So I, I, yeah, the, um, the Astros are beating the the Astros. Uh, no, I was just saying the uh, the Astros uh, are up on the Rangers now, uh, five to two in the in the top of the seventh. The uh, the Rangers are leading that series two two nothing. So we'll see what Houston can do as far as the comeback is concerned. But they they are winning game three. Houston is is my second favorite team, of course, well, after the Cardinals. Um, I'm, I'm a big Al Suve fan. Uh. But I would like to see the Texas Rangers in the World Series. I just want something different. Uh, Houston's been there, you know, several years um, prior. Uh, and I want to see, man. I, I'm a I, I hate, Jose Altuve fan. I All us are six foot and under, guys. That's my guy. Exactly. I, I hate saying it, man. But Philadelphia. Good block. Good block. I'm sorry. Uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia. The Phillies, man, uh, the way their bats are right now, I'm, uh, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. All about, I'm nervous about anybody playing against them, cause they, they ain't been yeah, balling, man. They on fire. And then Nola, man, Nola pitched a, a hell of a game last night. Yeah, they're on fire. Nola, who's who's the uh, a Cardinal um, target, which they won't get, cause he's gonna want too much money. Of course, the Cardinals won't pay. Um, but they're gonna put that out there just to make it to make the fan base think they're trying to do something, and then we get you know some triple A pitches to pitch this year, next year. <laughs> that's, that's you know, that are only gonna get later. rocked. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, but, but yeah, the playoffs. Uh, we're not even gonna talk about the man. Cardinals. We, we we ain't gonna talk about the Cardinals. Mm-mm. We ain't gonna talk about the Cardinals. We'll but you know what we are gonna talk about? You know what we are gonna talk about? What we talking about? No. We're gonna talk about a new that's sport. That's all going on in baseball. We're gonna talk about a new sport at the Olympics. New to some, but you no, know, we we've been playing it for forever. Mm-hmm. Um, some Doran of us are tearing is, our is, knees up. That Doran is a Doran is a, a all time legend. The the greatest uh, defensive end ever. Dorian one knee Brown. <laughs> Dorian one knee Brown. That's the, that's why I only got one knee. That's why he got one knee. And guess what that is, y'all? I can it in. It's a little sport we call the greatest pass in football. football. Ever in flag. D is the greatest pass rusher ever in the history of flag football. <laughs> he had like 10 sacks in one game. And they 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 it's funny because they play that way too. Like uh you can rush the passer immediately or whatever. Um, I was I was watching some of the uh, some of the highlights of some of the some of the international games that they had, and I was like, oh, they play the same way we played. I was like, oh, why didn't they have flag football twenty years ago? Because it was definitely twenty, <laughs> at least twenty years ago. <laughs> at least at, at least twenty. I'm thinking more like, like thirty. Yeah, we would, we would probably need wheelchair football right by now. <laughs> right, 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 right now. Right, exactly. Shoot! Come on! So, so what do you think about? Let me ask this question. Do y'all, do y'all really think? Do you really think that? Because uh, I was seeing something about this uh, the other day when they were talking about uh, NFL players wanting to play flag football. Now, my question is, I don't even want to get into the whole injury thing or what what could happen. Do you really think that NFL players would make a big difference? Playing flag football. 
uh, um, <laughs> I do. Uh, if just just Why? just think about it, you got you have. Uh, what if Tom Brady wants to go out there and be the quarterback of the flag uh, of the flag football team? You know, um, t- Tom Brady versus some unknown quarterback from where from wherever. Uh, oh, he can do that. Like- yeah, and Tariq Hill and guys like that. Yeah. You, you you got the, the talent in the N- NFL um, in that respect, especially the offensive talent. Here, here's my opinion. That's going to make the biggest difference. Go ahead, Dante. Here's my opinion on that. Here's my opinion on that. First of all, flag football. For flag football, you don't even need NFL caliber players. You could take the top players from college football and win gold. Yeah, you could. Yes, you could, Rodney. Yeah, you no, could. Who deep, else around deep. the world? Now, we're not talking about dance and, and bebop. We're not talking about uh, bebop breakdancing, which is going to be in the next years. Like I said, flag football is in 2025, <laughs> 2026, whatever, or 2028. Come on, bro. You can use college football players where else are they playing flag football besides countries where they have u.s military bases better than us mm-hmm. you don't need NFL oh, no. players oh no 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 you, you don't they need even risk the injury which like dory said if you exclude that to go, go participate right that's what i'm saying the, the, the whole premise of nfl players for this particular olympic sport I don't think we need it. Maybe baseball. Let's go back to that. Basketball, maybe not football. Especially so here's, flag here's, football. Here's the thing with that, though, Dante. Yeah, you don't. You probably don't need them because there's, there's a dearth. Of, there's a dearth of uh, football players that we have here in this country. But the NFL players want to go mm-hmm. because they they didn't have they haven't had the opportunity to go to an Olympic Games and win a, and have the opportunity to win a gold medal. So they want to go. Matter of fact, um, they were talking about it earlier today um, that the uh, NFL PA is in negotiations with the NFL I, I know what you're saying. to, to I know allow what you're saying, the right? players to go. The they want to go. They want to go. Um, player, like who, who, who would you rather have players. at your quarterback? I know what you're saying. You I know? understand they would. They want to. But to me, it's like a constant ride. To no, win. not really, because Olympic. Win, you know, so, so what you're saying is gold medal. Yeah, you saying the gold medal in basketball is a consolation prize. No, we're talking flag football, Rodney. Uh, That's I what I'm saying. For an NFL player to want to go play flag football uh, just to get a medal, I don't know why I wouldn't do it, but I know the players that would. Because, like I said, they haven't achieved certain accolades at other levels or even at the NFL level. So this is like a slam dunk, we want to talk basketball, gold medal. So, of course, some you would get NFL players that would want to do it, but why? So, uh, th- this is this my my, uh, my pushback on you. That's what the Pro Bowl is right now. Th- this so, my... I see your premise in that. That's exactly what the Pro Bowl is. It's this flag is football. Team. Tom you Brady has what? In a Pro Bowl. Tom Brady has what? Seven, gold, seven uh, Super Bowl championships? Mm-hmm. He has seven yep. Super Bowl championships, but he does not have a gold medal, right? Tom Brady would want a gold medal if he can get a gold medal. So um, these players want to go out there. They, On that they, they've never had. So they've, whenever other than, whenever other than the flag football people, becomes an Olympic sport, Tom's going to come back and want to play for a medal. Why not? You hear what I'm saying, Rodney? In 2028. Tom Brady is going to no, want to come back and play for an Olympic medal in flag oh, football. It is, it is. Well, I mean, I'm basically I'm just using just Tom Brady as an example. That's a bad yeah, example, a bad example. <laughs> to use Tom Brady. Well, hell, you can use uh, who, you insert the Mahomes. players. I get your point. NFL players, Pat Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes. <laughs> in, in four years, he he'll have what another three Super Bowl championships. <laughs> Remember, so. <laughs> <laughs> but again, yeah. a Super Bowl, a Super so Bowl Bill championship. Bill, that's a better game. example. Tyreek Hill, oh, Pat yeah. Mahomes in four years. Yeah, maybe. But again, why? Saying. Because it's a gold medal. 
It's a gold medal that, that you That's won for your country. I see what you're saying, yeah. Rodney. So yeah, all the great yeah. athletes in the other sports have the opportunity to win a gold medal, and the football players now never had that opportunity. Football. They're doing yeah, it now in the Pro Bowl. So it's just you don't get a gold medal run. for the Pro Bowl. You don't get a medal in a sport that we know we're already going to win. We're going to win. And we said that about basketball for a whole lot of years, didn't we? <laughs> you, you might win that first one. Hell, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> Dorian can try out. That's the best. That's the best pass rush. Dorian gonna be fifty-eight. He ain't trying out. <laughs> How you gonna feel in four years, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, and, and probably a whole lot worse. Well, you said Tom Brady. Right. Dorian gonna be a uh, Dorian gonna be a jet propelled a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's four years down the road. Five years down the road. Basically, we'll but, talk but about but this maybe over another too, three though. years to see who's going really to get you play. That's so far down the line, players. but it's an interesting concept, though. Go ahead, D. The NFL, Go ahead, D. The NFL, no, I'm saying the NFL has a lot of international players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it would be some other countries or whatever that would be able to field some teams or whatever, that kind of thing. But I I, I, I guess my, my thing is, is I don't think, and, 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 Kind of agreeing with Dante, but at the same time, it was I was thinking something different. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think you need NFL players to be able to win. I think college players will be able to win, but I also think that flag football is a different game, mm -hmm. and a lot, a lot of cats that play just because they couldn't make it in the NFL doesn't mean that they wouldn't be extremely competitive in flag football. So I, I think that even if you have NFL players, that does not guarantee that you're going to win a gold medal. Mm -hmm. So the, the the like you said, D, it's a completely different game. Flag football and, is more about speed. <laughs> and, well, yeah, and plus, well, also the thing about this too is, is think about you know going back to what we were talking about in terms of uh, the the world catching up with the United States in hoops. Mm -hmm. The one thing about having these professional players come play that makes it different from these international teams is that them international teams, they have clubs and they've been playing together for mm -hmm. years because the national team mm -hmm. stays together and they play together for a number of years. Whereas with 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 our national teams, well, you know, for basketball, they just coming together for a few months and trying to get together and play where these other teams have been playing together for years. And I think that that would be the same thing that you would see in flag football is that if you're always worried about trying to get the NFL players in, well, then how are they going to really get in there and get, get that chemistry together to be able to play where these other teams will have these international club teams that that's what they're going to do all the time. The national team is going to play flag football where the United States is going to be if if you allow NFL players to play, it's just going to be dependent upon. Okay, well, who are the next NFL stars that are going to play uh, in in the whatever flag football champion world flag football championship, so on and so forth. And I think that that's a big five, reason why the United I, States I, is I, having so much trouble beating these international five, teams in basketball. So, in a point, with the, with the IOC, right? Ask your question to that. All the This announcement well, was, was uh, like Dorian saying, it's an announcement. The IOC is an announcement to the world. Other teams around the world, get ready. Y'all got five years to try to put together some to compete with potentially NFL caliber players in flag football, which is going to be an Olympic sport in the 2028 Olympics. That's basically what that comes down to. It's just a notice. If y'all go compete, and like Dorian saying, here's your chance to show to, to shine. Like we talked about the hip hop in the next Olympics. Yeah. Uh, for the bebop dance, the same thing. So, uh, you got flag football teams and competitors around the world. You got five years to get ready because you might be playing Tyreek Hill, Tom Brady. <laughs> so, 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 two things. First thing, uh, shout out to the Aces. They won the championship. Okay. Anyway, um, second thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, to, uh, on a serious note, I think it's going to be a moot point because the Olympics is right in the middle of the summer, and that's when the NFL teams are actually getting ready for their season. So I don't see um, 
you know, the the quote unquote stars in the NFL going to play flag football. Um, the Shoot, football. actually, the Olympics start in September. Is it September? I thought it was like, like August. August. It's like August to September. They don't play in the yeah. summer, summer. It's like August, August. August. Yeah, it's like September, August. September, like September, like September. August. That's when yeah. the season is about to start. Right. Exactly. So I, again, I don't. I don't see. Let me make sure though. I don't see NFL players um, actually doing it, or college players for that point. I can see some players that have used up their eligibility in college that haven't, you know, haven't caught on with another team. I I can see them getting together and putting the team together and, right. and you know practicing this and the other. Um, Sorry, I, was, have, I was wrong. It's uh, the Olympics is uh, it's 2024 Olympics is July 26th through August 11th. Yeah, so it's, so it's better, the end of the end of July, beginning of August. This has been the same in twenty eight also. So the end of July, the beginning of August. That's that's the media summer training camp. Right, football will be a summer, it's a summer Olympic sport twenty twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like I said, I can't. I don't. I don't see. So that's what I'm saying. Actual you don't have NFL players. players you literally it. take the top twenty five draft pick from the twenty. But the, the problem you're gonna have again, the problem you're gonna have with that is that these these teams are actually paying these players these salaries, and they're not gonna be paying these players these salaries and letting somebody go and get hurt in a flat football game. What was my man that the, the running back that played for New England uh, that uh, hurt himself with the Robert, um, Robert something? Uh, I don't see it. That's why I still uh, so uh, I can't think of his name, but he he hurt himself um, Why do? Like at, the, at the Pro Bowl not be allowing playing flag football. football. It was on sand, but they were playing flag football nonetheless. And Robert it, Edwards, Robert Edwards, and it, he never played after that. You know, he and he was like a, either, either he was a rookie or his second year, something like that. Uh, but he was a Pro Bowl player, but you know, never played. So teams are not going. You know, they're not going to let let the <laughs> Their quote unquote stars go. They might let the the practice players go. You know the practice team players. They can go and then come back. And, you know you can have your spot on the practice team. Um, that's, that's my whole point. It. Yep, that's about undrafted it. free agents, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. Yeah, those those will be the players Especially that that you put out there. Ten five years, yeah. so whoever their next class, twenty twenty seven class, that's expected to go play. But but the thing, like what Dorian said about the national team, if you think all we got to do is just to roll out a football and put some 20, like you just said, 25 players out there and let them play and we're going to win, that may work. <laughs> but it's, or, you know, for teams that, Olympics. yeah, but for teams that, that have played forever, for instance, when when um, teams that play together have, have that chemistry can go out and win against a lot bigger, a lot better teams. When we played basketball, we had the same five players to go out wherever we went and play uh -huh. basketball, and we just going to win. And that's just because dudes knew where I was gonna, I'm coming around, uh, around that pick, throw me the ball, Dory going to steal the ball, <laughs> Monty, and, Monty and Johnny going to be down hey, in the post. Look this stat up. Of course. You have a chemistry, but look this up. Or do look up to see who's the best flag football team in the world. That would help answer our, our question. Do we even have because that? We never see this on ESPN. Think. We haven't seen this sport or this yeah, team. That is true. Team that we're talking about, but yet we Let's see competitions all the time. Name one of these teams from what country around the world. So that's the easy. That's the easy for to look up. Who's our competition around the world in flag football? That's where we would start with. Who's the best flag football team? And I bet you it's from a country where they have a U.S. military base. Mexico. Right, so, okay, so here we go. So for, for and this ended up being a much longer topic than we thought, didn't it? Um, yeah. So uh, for flag football for women, it's the U.S., Mexico, Austria, which is interesting, Brazil, Panama, Japan, France, Italy, Spain, Austria. Germany, and this is in order. Chechia, Israel, whoever team neutral is. Maybe that's Switzerland. Um, no, Denmark, <laughs> then Switzerland, <laughs> then Belarus, Probably. Finland, Chile, yep. Canada, and then yep. the UK. You see my Britain. point? East for men, for, for military men, bases. 
NATO for men is almost the same, but for men, uh -huh. it's U.S., Mexico, Panama, Italy, France, Austria, Denmark, Germany, Israel, Spain, Japan, Team Neutral, Thailand, Switzerland, Korea, Chile, Brazil, Dubai. Finland, Belarus, yep. and then India. Mm. Yep. So, so that's so again. Right? The the U.S. Yeah, there's only so many places around the world, but why isn't this the more? Wreck? Why is it in on TV? But now they're trying. They, the Olympics just pushing it down. I thought it should have been a sport before uh, uh, the bebop in next year's Olympics. You know what I <laughs> mean? Bebop. So that's kind of ridiculous. It's the bebop. This long for a sport. That <laughs> the bebop. I thought you were talking about the human beatbox. <laughs> uh oh, what happened to my other? Dante hey, deleting so. stuff. <laughs> B-boys. Dante B deleting stuff. You gotta leave it at that so don't we know what we talked about for next week. Um all right, so so uh the, at the end of the day, I'm I'm gonna look forward to uh watching oh the my flag bad. football I, I, I thought I could disappear. Flag football and Dorian's comeback. <laughs> and D D gonna come back at the age of 58 in a and, motorized uh, wheelchair. <laughs> the become the comeback player of the year. Be come back, bruh. I watch you. Years. I watch you. You watch be watching for a few minutes. On the <laughs> five years. Watch it for five minutes. <laughs> Coach, you got one last one in you. One last pass. No, one. no. Hey, so. no. hey, before we move on, you like a winner, man. If you bought the other knee, hey, just have matching Real pairs, bruh. I got I got an almost uh, two year old. Gordon. I get winded walking down. Hey, real the steps, quick, Gary. Uh, look up to see who's on the who's on the U.S. Look up the players on the U.S. flag football team. Let's see if there are any ex NFL players or former anything on there. By, by the way, while while Rodney gets set up for the okay. next topic. Okay, I'm looking it up now. All right, Rodney's getting set up for the next topic. Oh, we ready? We ready? I'm gonna go, go ahead. Refresh go ahead, my drink. It's a great point, as we said. Now, y'all go, y go ahead while I'm looking it up. Sport. Let's. All right, we're gonna let D. We're gonna let D. Um, come in and um give us an update on the flag football. After but he researches it. The next thing we're gonna talk about is is um uh TV television. So. Um, this past summer, ESPN has redone their lineup, redone their staff, um, the, the different shows. And one of the new shows that they have that they're forcing down our throat is the Pat McAfee show. Hmm. There we go. Uh oh, there we go. The Pat McAfee show. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Pat McAfee is a former punter that has um, developed an online presence with his podcast. Nowhere as good as the one that we have, but um, he's, he has a, and a radio. certain... He was a certain, on radio. Um, a top radio demographic. <laughs> yeah, he has a certain demographic that... that Follow. Uh, you, that you were really Follow. fine on Fox News. Mm. <laughs> you might have on the Fox channel, but mm. <laughs> um, ESPN, ESPN got rid of a lot of folks to bring Pat McAfee <clears throat> in to the tune of five years, $85 million. That's the contract they gave Pat McAfee to come over and put his show on ESPN's network. Mm. And <laughs> As an avid listener of sports talk, sports radio, I am not a fan. I'm, I'm, I'm hated, just not hated it. It's, it's, it's not something that um, I continue watching or listening to. Uh, unfortunately, I always change to something completely different whenever his show comes on. Because to me, all you have is a bunch of um a bunch of folks online um basically dressed like him wearing t-shirts tank tops 
uh, and just a frame shirts. Yeah, whatever, whatever you would call them things. It just, um, <laughs> bruh, the, 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 they, I just don't like the, the language they use is, is something that I'm not, it's not, not really professional. It ain't nowhere just close to it, being right? Damn, that's it. <laughs> it's it, it's a it's a hood show <laughs> that and he getting paid a, a king's ransom for this hood show. But there's a reason why he got paid this king's ransom. Dante, tell us why he getting paid this king's ransom. Yeah, why get paid? This is stupid. <laughs> oh, Dante, tell us why he got paid. All right. I'm just gonna paraphrase. There might be a slight delay, so I'm gonna keep the point. I'm gonna parallel to draw to appeal to a certain demographic, like we said. That's the WWE, NASCAR, SEC type of crowd because they got rid of all their other talent, skillful talent, because of this guy can draw in. More people because ESPN has been losing subscribers, so they need another market. And where is that? The South Southeast. Look at this guy. If that was Stephen A. Smith at a game or <laughs> doing a show with his pants sagging, showing off his fruit balloon underwear, stuff, he would be gone from TV. But as Rod said, they're feeding this guy down our throat every week. Serious. We can't go anywhere and get a job, interview for a job, let alone be on national TV looking like trailer park trash for $85 million. That was one of my what the fuck moments, Rod. So I'm going to just sum it up at that. It's deplorable. So that's why we wanted to talk about what's going on in TV when you see all this other just spurgy going on with other analysts this and that of other this is deplorable guys we can't do look at us we're at least we look respectable on a podcast look at this guy mm -hmm. this is what folks would call a thug look at the hat to the back when he was a punter this is what they typically label as thugs if it's somebody else remember he was a wrestler as well this is what he does he's a shock jock this is why they hired him. Gave the first ones to drop an F bomb on live TV on sports. But they, they, but ESPN has the money to pay the FCC for that fine. And not to mention, oh, they, they, allegedly, this guy's like Payola. It's the reason why Aaron shows up on his show. He pays Aaron Rodgers to show up on his show. So this is Payola. For trailer trash. Aaron Rodgers shouldn't even associate himself with someone like the Raiders. So the <laughs> Aaron Rodgers one thing. of my what the fuck moments. The the Aaron Rodgers thing. Um he paid well allegedly Aaron Rodgers a million dollars to to be on his show, which is a great Her business show? move. It's a great show. business move. Was it per show? I don't know. It wasn't per show. I thought it was for the for the season. Pay over. But it was a great. Well, however much he's paying, it was a great business move because it allowed him to get that eighty five million dollar contract. For show for ESPN. Right. Now, now, he paid me five dollars for this season. Man, <laughs> you got and looking for my change. He had the contract already. Looking for my change. He had the but contract already. But hold up. Um. Hey. So here, here's my here's my problem with and you 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 said here's it. the other thing he's a smart businessman don't forget he had a contract for 112 million dollars with FanDuel uh huh mm -hmm. but here, here's here's my thing and you just said it I gotta give Steve it to him that's a smart businessman he Steve left FanDuel can never come out there and look for, like that and say stuff like he said hmm. um and Dan sharp couldn't either. Exactly. Matter of fact, uh, you, you they fuss about uh, oh Stephen A. Show. You can't come in there without a tie on. Every time you come in there without a tie on, know. you know they always got something to say about you. But here it is, this guy. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I hate to, I hate to give labels, but yeah, he the 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 closest thing you can say is is that that trailer park 
SEC vibe that he gives off. Um, the the fact that ESPN is is willing to pay all of the FCC fines for all the f bombs he dropped, uh, and he drops quite a few of them. <laughs> they try to censor him, but you know, sometimes some censor buttons don't don't get pushed fast enough, and and they come out, and it's it's not something. It's one it's one thing for 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 everybody to be sitting, uh, you know. Uh, around the barbershop, you know, laughing and joking, talking about sports, this, that, and the other. But it's something completely different when you got uh, somebody on here on a national TV TV show dropping f bombs and all these other all these other vulgar and drinking, smoking, not doing all kind of stuff <laughs> on a, on the TV show, man. I'm like, come on, you bro. Me, uh, who are the guys that storm the White House? The Proud Boys. He looks like a yeah. Proud Boy. He looks like one of the guys well, that would have stormed the White House. Let, let me let me say let me say this. Okay, so That's I, I, don't know, I, don't necessarily, I don't know. I don't necessarily want to say in, in ESPN's defense, but in his defense, that's what he was doing on his podcast. Mm -hmm. He was showing up on the podcast as is. You know, with the you know now the 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 symbol or whatever has has become you know the 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 black A frame shirt or you know the wife beater as they refer to them right you know that's become his signature his shtick right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that what ESPN was trying to do was is also because also what has become popular unfortunately is barstool sports. And that's the kind of stuff that they do and say, even though it's extremely sexist and very misogynistic and and extremely racist at times. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that that's what ESPN was trying to tap into. They were trying to tap into that kind of market, that kind of, you know, up in your face. And, and what this all is, interestingly enough, you know, not to get on a, a political thing, but what this all is, is carryover from the Trump years. <laughs> right. And, and what started to become popular and, and, and so on and so forth during that particular presidency and, and so on and so forth. And and how, you know, these things that started to increase and, 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 and that kind of thing, misogyny, racism, so on and so forth. Right now. So I had never paid attention to the podcast, never listened to his podcast. Wow. I had seen highlights, little snippets or whatever, never watched it. Mm -hmm. But when they hired him to do the show, I, I thought I would check it out. I didn't like it. Now, for me, and this was this is what I thought was interesting, and I, I think I mentioned said this to y'all when we were texting about this. Um, I said to me, this is the Dan Lebatard show without the diversity. Mm -hmm. If you had Dan Lebatard in terms of being the big name, Pat McAfee's the big name. Lebatard was the big name, the big, um, you know, uh, the big star from the Miami Herald, the big journalist or whatever, that, that kind of thing, right? And then he has all of these other guys that come in and are just kind of his boys and they sit around and talk. But he had a lot of diversity. He had a black dude. He himself is Cuban American. He had the white guy. So, you know, he had all of this diversity that he had within his, within, uh, within his circle. The little vulgar dude was what's his name? Who I who I can't think of. You know that was kind of his his the little dude he had on the side that was kind of the little vulgar guy that would be the little shock jock or whatever. Well, now you have got this same thing with Pat McAfee, except it's all white guys. I think it's one black dude, isn't it? Yeah, it's one it black dude. One, one black yep. dude that's on there or whatever. Yep. Um, and and so, but it's still that that one same time. stick still rolling with this idea of. Somebody just comes on and just says whatever comes to their head about whatever it is that's going on again, you know, like Dante said, the shock jock thing. But as far as the show itself is concerned, I did not find it something that held my interest. I, I wasn't, I didn't find uh, the other day I was watching because uh, I tried to give it a second chance. The other day I watched the one where uh, AA Ron was on there and he's boring. I, I I don't I don't know why everybody tries <laughs> yeah. to hang on what it is that Aaron Rodgers says. Aaron Rodgers is boring Can as I just hell. Sum it up he so sitting up listening to Aaron Rodgers yep. and listening to them trying Can to I just talk sum to it up like Rogers, this about the show. I was like, this is boring as hell. And I changed the channel. So I don't I don't see the appeal in it. 
because I didn't find them doing anything or talking about yeah. anything that I found particularly interesting. Yeah, to me, the the, the Dorian, what did you think about his show? I don't like that shit. Who <laughs> <laughs> we thought about the show to sum it up about? That's you know what? up in a nutshell, everybody. That's what I'm on that note. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that. That's pretty much what I was gonna say. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, we gonna we gonna roll with that one. We gonna roll with that one. We gonna roll with that one. So, but you know what? Let me let me do this. Uh, since we're talking about, um, I'm gonna move something up right quick. Um, since we're talking about um, talk shows, we're going to talk about Michael Parson and uh, Athletes Podcast. Now, we talked about athletes having podcasts you know, a couple of episodes ago, and Micah has brought it back to the forefront this week. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of ironic that people that have podca- podcasts. In this case, Michael Parson has a podcast, which is, you know, a, a media uh, platform. But then you get you you fussing about how the media talks about you. Micah is, is the is one of the best players on the greatest team ever assembled in football, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, even with that. He's kind of he kind of he kind of said some stuff this week that kind of put his foot in, in, in his mouth. Kind of like you about, when you just said that about the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the greatest thing ever. You know the greatest team ever. But um uh the, the thing is the, the we talk again, we talked about this before. Athletes in these podcasts, their platforms, what they do with their platforms. Um, you can't have a platform in the media and then fuss about the media using their platform to talk about you. <laughs> so, uh, and that's what Mike was doing. You know, he, he want to fuss about the media that's fussing about, that's talking about his teams, um, the way that they've been performing, the, the, the lackluster performance to say the least. I got some other words. I'm just going to leave it at, lack, at lackluster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause I don't want to be like Pat McAfee and get censored. Um, we don't have the money to pay the FCC. I, I don't have the money like ESPN to get to to pay for all the f bombs I want to say right now about those Cowboys and that 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 performance they had against San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. Do we got a lot of f bombs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. But that being said, uh, just just take it, man. Just 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 take it, and, and you know sometimes. Mike said a lot of stuff this past week, um, even after the, the San Francisco game. Now, we got whooped. We got completely destroyed in that San Francisco yeah, yeah. game. Yeah. In, all facets, in all facets of the, the, the football, offense, defense, special teams, coaching, the trainers, everybody got completely destroyed in that game. Mm-hmm. You can't come back on TV or on your podcast and start talking about, well, we were still the better team. They just beat us. No, they are. They proved to you on that day that they were much better than you on that day. Well, that goes to show you, uh, like we were talking about, um, I think the Pat Bell, uh, Patrick Beverly's uh, podcast, mm-hmm. when he was on there talking and, you know, it was like bias, you know, his bias opinion. And he was saying how he was much better than Chris Paul and had a better career. To me, it it it. It hurts your credibility. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes me not want to watch because now, you know, you, you're not being realistic and you're not credible. So, you know, why would I want to hear anything else you have to say on the topic when, you know, what you're saying is so far from the truth? Right. I, for me, I, I think that and I and I, I completely agree. Um, I think for me also, you know, to kind of add on to that, it it. For me, what it does is it stokes conflict. Mm-hmm. So you know, one of the things I would, one of the things that Lewis Riddick said about this today, I, and I love Lewis Riddick. Shout out to Lewis Riddick. I think Lewis Riddick is great. And he's one of the things he right said, now. yeah, he should be. Uh, he one of the things he said was, and I agree with this that 
I don't I don't mind it in a way in many ways. Um, I wish they wouldn't do it while they were in season. Mm-hmm. I wish they uh, that kind of thing or while they are actually active players. Um, so but I don't necessarily mind the fact that it gives the players a, a platform to clap back at people. I, I think they should have a right to speak their mind. If, if I'm going to come at you and say all these things. You know, as a, as a reporter, if the media can come at them and say all these things, they should have the opportunity to be able to defend themselves. What I had a, what I had a problem with with Micah Parsons, and this is what I have a problem with with Pat Bev doing this as a current player, is actually calling people out and saying names. Mm-hmm. He he could have he could have said everything that he had to say without specifically talking about Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. Mm-hmm. He could have got his point across without specifically naming any team or any player. And that's the problem I had with it. And that's the problem I have with Pat Bear. If you think you're the greatest player, okay, say that. But you ain't got to say, oh, I'm better than Chris Paul. And you got to turn around and play Chris Paul. And, mm-hmm. you know, that that kind of thing. Now, I don't know if it's it's a part of game mis- gamesmanship that they're trying to mm-hmm. play. You know, that could be exactly. kind of mind games that they're trying to play or whatever. You know how that works. Um, you know, giving people bulletin board material, as they call oh, yeah. it, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I really have a problem with current athletes doing it in season. That That's really what I, what I have an issue with more than anything else. And like you said, Rod, I agree that you can't get your butt whooped and then come out here <clears> talking. Because <throat> for me, what you're doing a podcast for, your ass need to be watching film. As bad exactly. as y'all got y'all's ass kicked. You exactly. should be spending this two hours watching film on how to come play the next game instead of talking about how we better than them, but they just beat us. Come on. About 30 points. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right. You see that, right? So Michael Parsons. What I got to say, you see that? You see that, Michael Parsons? What I got to say about what you said and all this on your podcast? Mm-hmm. That's what Michael Parsons is. Y'all got beat down, right? Michael Parsons got beat down. You had a good game this last week. Stick with that. Like Dorian said, wait till the season over. Wait till you retire. Podcast like another athlete. Shut your mouth. Let us talk the crap. For you. Hit us up. Blame it on the book. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I got to say. <laughs> Y'all saw that. That's what he got to say. That's what he going to say. All right. Speaking of which, what y'all got to say about this, though? I ain't going to tell you what it looked like. So yeah. tell us what it is. What is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> talking to me? What is that in the background? In the background. I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah, you talking to you. Yeah, you. Yeah. That you was pointing at. What is that thing? To, to your left. What? Is what? The, whatever that oh, thing 40, you was pointing at. What oh, is my, my 49ers. My 49ers. The 49ers thing. 49ers you mean on my 49ers gear? Bruh. <laughs> Don't touch it. Yeah. Don't that's, touch that's it. <laughs> Don't touch it. Like that. <laughs> Put it down. So every time Dallas loses, Hey man, yeah, D, yeah, D you used to have that around the house. <laughs> oh oh right. man, You're crazy, dude. Yeah, Dora, where's yours? Keep rubbing on it. Hey, stop, stop rubbing it. It's it's stop rubbing it. So, oh. it's my genie. <laughs> I'm wishing for a oh. Super Bowl. <laughs> then, if you if you if you stroke it, would you get a Super Bowl championship? Native right? American gore. And man, oh, you stroke it. <laughs> so, like, if, if you, so. If you stroke it, it'll release. <laughs> so anyway, this is from the same family as a pump. Genie. <laughs> a lot of dollar bills in here from all the Dallas fans that lost. 
Ooh, I wish I could bust wait. it open to show right now the money here from the Dallas fans that had to put money right there, right? <laughs> My guys I'm never hurt. said a good word. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'm hurt. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is a great this is great y'all. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh. I'm gonna bust it open. So anyway, wish I can bust it open. <laughs> bust it open. Mother <laughs> Mel, that too. <laughs> oh. 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 Y'all got problems, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you put that away, please? Put it away. Put it away. I do. I do. Before we, before we get signed by the, F by the FCC. Oh, oh Lord. He, he rubbing again, a genie out. <laughs> He's gonna release that genie on you. Oh, let me say no. Oh yeah. He come oh. with the with the porno music. Get back to the show, fellas. Wow, chicken, wow, wow. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, hey man, push it to the side, bro. Push it to the side. <laughs> We're getting back to our show, y'all. Yeah, we have fun. We're killing we me, man. Killing me. Oh, my God. But that's You're actually uh, that's a pump. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. Yeah. You're pumping, pump, all right. You never seen one before. It's a squash. Basically, it's a squash. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You got to say your question. But what was the uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's sure to you. I want to see. I want to see. Before we so it's so rude, it's perfect. I'm good. <laughs> you bring out the yeah. toys, yeah. man. <laughs> we bring out the toys. <laughs> we don't know that thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> He gonna release that genie on <laughs> Man. Hey man, let's talk about these Colorado Buffaloes. A, a new release. <laughs> oh. oh gee. Somebody else think I busted open was the Colorado Buffaloes. <laughs> Prime. <laughs> Prime. Prab had a hard time. Uh -uh. A long, hard game. Prime had a hard time this past weekend. His Colorado Buffaloes got bust from behind. They were up 29 points. And, and lost the game. And they rolled Ooh, away Lord. with a loss. Man, up 20 and they lost, man. And they gave it up. They gave up the ass right <laughs> Yeah, they gave it up, bro. They gave it up. <laughs> but for real. I think I text you guys. For those that don't know, hmm. y'all should know. We show where we're from around the country. So as y'all remember, uh, the NCAA scheduled that game were late night, uh, after midnight by the final time it was over because most people, most of America, turned the game off after the first half. They figured the game right. was over. They were up for the said, Their defense totally collapsed. Nine to nothing at the half. Even though a quarter of America was watching, only an eighth watching after the half and you woke up i text you guys i hope y'all stayed awake if y'all remember to see what these fools just did y'all woke up i think dory woke up the next day he couldn't believe it nobody right. could that missed that game that was like would have been like that dodgers world series when your boy hit the home run everybody was on the parking lot bruh they definitely need to do they definitely have to do something about their defense because what they've been giving up a, uh, a lot of points every game, pretty much. I think the only except with the exception of one game, the Nebraska game, I think. Yeah, 
But you know what? Here, here's the thing. This is the first. That was the first game Overall. where I can truly say, Dion. Probably about an average of 40, 40 points a game they give up, right? Yeah, probably about an average. But he did say he need dogs. He need players, but, and he's going to be getting those players. But I, I, and the thing is, you got a twenty nine point lead. Dion Sanders should never have allowed that game to get to that point. Even when that team started giving away points, he needed to rock, rally his team up and say, hey, listen, we ain't going to lose this game. Y'all better come on and play. You had Shadur Sanders at halftime sending out um, his little advertisement for his to, to buy his merchandise. You know, yep. Yep. that that's not that's something that that can never that can't happen. That can't. And that's why I was saying, <laughs> Rod. And that ain't that ain't got nothing to do with uh um that that's all about coaching. That's all you about coaching. Deion, Deion, Deion in the second half. Deion, Deion and his, his staff they ridiculous. lost that game. The players, the players will get complacent. Deion don't even cut. You know, Deion don't cuss. In that second right. half, he was absolutely livid, especially at his defensive coordinator, at the players. But they just mm-hmm. could not cover. I had Andre Bear Fisher up. They could not cover one guy. One guy had almost 300 yards and three touchdowns in the second half. Mm-hmm. And they were in coverage, but yeah. one guy. You know, and we we've all been around sports long enough to to know that you know when you're up uh, by a big uh, lead at halftime, it's inevitable that you're gonna mm-hmm. let up. You yeah, know, you could say we could say what we want to and all this, but it's it's gonna be a let up. And especially when you're dealing with young players, you know you could tell them until until the cows come home, until you turn blue in the face, and you know you could tell them, hey, the other team's gonna make a comeback. They're gonna come back. So, you know, we got to brace ourselves and, you know, continue to play hard. And the younger teams, you know, they, they're not going to get it. So it, it was a – I think it's a, a very important teachable moment, you know, for them. And hopefully they can use that as they go forward to, you know, never take any team for granted. Yeah, but – And and it's crazy because this these are, these are the games I remember when right after uh, they beat TCU that first game. <clears throat> And I remember, I, I think, I don't know if I text all three of y'all or if it was just Rodney I text. And I said, if they win the next game, I said, because I looked at how if they won that first game, that it was real possible that they could win the next two. I said, they're going to be ranked. But they ranked them after the first game, after they beat TCU, mm-hmm. then they put them at like 22. Then after they won again, they put them at 19. But then we we figured out, as we, as we never thought would happen, that the Pac-10, or the Pac-12, or whatever they are, Two. as as, uh, <laughs> as Dante refers to them, the pussy ass conference. <laughs> as you know, we never thought that the Pac-12 or whatever was going to be that good, but they end up having five or six teams ranked. And I remember looking at that Colorado schedule and saying, "Ooh, they going they ain't going they only gonna end up probably five and seven. Or at the most, they could end up at seven and five. But I had, I knew that they had to beat Stanford. That it was certain teams that they had to beat mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. excuse me, because they were not going to beat USC. Mm-hmm. They were not going to beat Oregon. Oregon. Mm-hmm. They're not going to. They're not going to beat Oregon State. They're, Utah. They sure as hell, they they sure as hell ain't going to beat Washington. Mm-hmm. And, and they not. And they not going to beat Utah either. So I was like, they got to beat Stanford. They got to beat these other little teams. And. Just the way they've been playing, I was like, yeah, they're going to they, they gonna have an even worse record than I thought. But at the same time, it's a much better record than we thought that they were going to have at the beginning. It's still a much better record than they than from 1-11 last year to mm-hmm. winning four games this year. We know Dion, we know Coach Prime. Let me give him his peas. We know Coach Prime wants better. But at the same time, as y'all have all been saying, we got to be realistic. But – they have to do something about that defense. And uh and and this is what I said too after that one game, just like you know, repeating what Dante said, just like after that game, when they talked to Coach Prime and he said, I need about seven or eight more dogs. Mm-hmm. And if, if y'all remember, I know I know me and Rodney had this conversation. I said he was talking about the offensive and defensive lines. Because mm-hmm. that's where they're getting killed at. Because they can't run and they can't stop the run. I, I'm looking at I'm looking here at uh the stats. So they defensively they're giving up. I told you. They're they scoring thirty four points a game, giving up thirty five. Um, they <coughs> rushing. They have on, they've only gained 
964 yards rushing, but they've given up 1,261 yards rushing. They've lost 360 yards rushing, and they've only and their opponents have only lost 159 yards. So they're not getting any tackles for loss. They're not getting any sacks. They're giving up big plays and they're giving up points. So, yeah, they definitely have to have something on that offensive and defensive line because they got to be able to run the ball, right, in order to – in order when they get up by 29, you got to be able to run the ball to shorten the game, to keep the clock running. But they they can't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they they definitely got some work to do. But, again, it's his first year, man. Mm -hmm. I, I still think I still think before we can really start judging Coach Prime, we really have to see what what kind of recruiting classes he's going to get. And he's been really good at using the transfer portal. So I think we need to give him probably another another recruiting class, you know, at least at least at least two. But definitely one more, but at least two more recruiting classes to really see what they're going to be like. And probably not next year, but the year after next that that's going to be the year that's going to really tell what kind of job he's been doing in uh, Colorado. So the, the problem that they have is that um, hey, hey, Dory, real quick on those stats, those stats you gave us. Yeah. Go ahead, Dante. No, go ahead, Rock. I was just going to ask that, uh, Dorian, how many uh, passing yards has Colorado given up this year? Because like I said, there's 300, almost 300 by one player. They're giving up as far as far as like said, they're as far as they're giving work. up. She needs dogs in that um, secondary too. Well, it, it it doesn't actually say number of yards specifically, but they are at passing. They are averaging uh, three hundred forty six yards Pass a game, yard. but the, and they're they're giving up. They're giving up three hundred sixteen passing yards a game. So That's it good. says, uh, okay, total. It says they've given hey, up a total. You just saw the stat. Yeah. <clears throat> They're giving up a total of 20, 24, 2,423 yards. Um, I'm sorry. Their, their opponents have 2,200 passing yards against them. So, yeah, that, that passing, that, that whatever's happening in the secondary is also an issue, too. But, but what's happening in the secondary – it's also a part part and parcel of what's happening. How they're not um, getting any penetration. Mm-hmm. They're they're not. They don't have anybody to rush the passer. So they standing back there all day. And then you saw the way Oregon ran the yep. ball against them. They can't stop the run. So yep, the, the offensive defensive line. Once they fix that, yep. then we'll see we'll see them have much better stats in the secondary. Yep. The, the the problem that they have yeah, is that do it all by itself. They're, and like all they're saying, a victim of their own success. The fact mm-hmm. that they came out and won that first game and then won the second game and, you know, everybody start you know, all the stars are going to Colorado Buffalo games or what have you. Um, everybody was, uh, you know, that was they the kinda, uh, ticket. You know, yeah, they kind of went Hollywood. The players, exactly. they kind of went Hollywood. Exactly. Um, and again, against USC, you never expected it. Well, Oregon, you never expected them to beat Oregon. I've been saying USC, all season. You never expected to beat USC. All Colorado had. All Colorado has to do is win six games, become bowl eligible. That's like winning the national championship in Dion's first year. And what will happen if they become bowl eligible? Guaranteed they're going to be matched up against an SEC team. <laughs> I just think they need to, uh, you know, refocus and, you know, uh, go back to making the main thing the main thing. Make the main Brother, thing. The main. Exactly. Make the main thing the main thing. Focus on the football aspect. The other stuff is going to come. Just need to shoot. You know, especially for you know Dion's sons. Right. Know, for that, Shadur and Shiloh. Gonna, right. Yeah. That's that's going to come. So just you know focus on the main thing first, and then you know mm-hmm. you'll get there. So they are uh, four and three right now. They have the next game. Is against US, USC, I'm sorry, UCLA on the 28th. UCLA is ranked 25th. Then they have November 4th, Oregon State, who's ranked number 12. Uh, they have a chance against Arizona. Um, 
on the 11th and Washington yeah, State. Uh, but Washington State is four and two also. Uh, Washington State is four and two, and what is Arizona? Arizona so is crazy. four and three. So they don't, but, bruh, The last they they got either they they got winning uh, teams teams with winning records for the next six games. They may not. They have, yeah. So they I, have to man. win. I, I don't yeah. think they're gonna be able to win it. These games. And it ain't a slam dunk. They're going to be able to do it with their remaining What's schedule. That, three to seven games. They got five more. They got 12 games. Like six to six. I don't know if they're going get, to get the six. They need to win two more games out of this schedule. And I don't see it. Arizona is, is at home. It's going to be it's And Washington be tough, State is on the road. But that's their goal. Win six. And that's like the national championship for Deion's first year. But that's why that and the conference they're going to possibly harder. dominate next year. A totally revamped conference. That, that's why that Stanford yeah. game gonna be such a hurdle, yeah, man. Yeah, the fact so that they gave that game away. Yeah, I, I might have even gave them a chance to beat UCLA if they that's wasn't gonna, playing cost at them UCLA. All eligibility. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's gonna cost them, cost them uh, a chance, and and not You're only right. the, and they lost the, to Stanford. The, the thing about bowl eligibility is that you get a whole extra month of practice with your team. For that game, um, uh, you know, if you don't don't become eligible, your season's over. But if you get a, if you get a chance to go to a bowl game, you get a whole month of practice, and that month of practice is big. You know, your team right. for the next, next year, year, right? Yeah, yeah, for the next year. So, uh, I you hope know, he does it or whatever. Get more chances to shine. They need those that bowl game. But count on the same yeah, token though in college football. Count on the same lines as Dion. We're going to talk about speaking of, you know, Dion and college football, black athletes, black sports in particular. What else going on, Rod, with another Hall of Fame college football player? Well, we got some uh, issues with the problems in the HBCU football. Uh, this week we had uh, one of the uh, coaches. Former former um, running back for uh, Heisman Team Trophy Titans. winner, Ohio State. Uh, Heisman Trophy winner, Heisman Ohio Trophy State grad. Winner. Ohio State. He said what? Now he was just repeating the Ohio State Heisman Trophy winner from the Ohio State University. Oh, he said the Ohio. I thought he said he didn't go to Ohio State. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ohio. Anyway. State. Uh, one Eddie George, who's the coach at uh, Tennessee State University. Uh, Tennessee State is currently four and two this year, uh, but Eddie George has some issues with the way things are going down there. Talk to me, Dante. What 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 is Eddie George? Uh, what is his complaint? So this kind of falls back to like Dion with the controversy Dion Sanders got when he left Jackson State. And you had a bunch of people with backlash talking about Deion Kaner. He said he was going to help improve the team, which he did. They became a national draw. They got team uh, games on ESPN and all that. And and then when he left, it was a huge outroar. You know, why come you couldn't do this for our, for this school, this and that? Deion went on 60 Minutes and told exactly what the deal was at Jackson State University, the corruption and no money behind the program. The facilities was crap. You name it. So, of course, why wouldn't he leave? But this issue came up. And to that point, another person I want to call out, Killer Mike, the rapper, he totally killed Deion Sanders for doing just that such thing, leaving, he said, a black school at HBCU to go to Colorado for the money. Basically, he ran off on his people and all this other stuff. I ain't heard Killer Mike come out and either kill our guy here, Eddie George, for his comments, or basically saying what Deion already said. So the controversy is, and you know, Eddie George is down here winning at Tennessee State. They're four and two. You see the numbers right there. As he basically called them, the fans are fit. They don't show up. Look at those numbers. 23,907 fans is the average over six games. They only had in the two home games, the average uh, 8,600. Look at this, Rod. 13, almost 14,300 at the homecoming game last week, which they ended up winning. 
There were 30,000 fans outside tailgating rock. Mm -hmm. But they want to criticize Dion for leaving stuff like this when there is no support there. And he basically echoed the same thing Dion was saying. What's wrong with the fans? You got a Hall of Fame head coach down here, but yet y'all don't want to come to the games. He has y'all winning and y'all don't want to come to the games. So when Eddie George leaves Tennessee State, I don't want to hear all that crying and stuff going on. This is a problem. This is one of the problems with the sporting programs at the HBCUs. You get a big time coach to come down there that went to one of your schools, but then you can't seem to support them financially within the athletic programs. You can't draw the students inside the game and then everybody dip. So when he dipped for a bigger deal, the and the band played on, they're gonna play taps. That's what I want the band to play when he leaves. So don't call him out. So that's one of the issues going on down there, as we just segue from Dion, because everybody's calling out, and he's suffering the same problems. Quit blaming everybody well, else, and they start to need to look at themselves. Ed, Ed Reed had the same issue. You remember he was yeah, upset because he had to cut he had to cut his own grass and and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And and the, I forgot the, about Ed Reed. Is, and, right. and interestingly enough. You know, I, the problem goes back a long way, right? It w one of the issues with with HBCUs, mm -hmm. you know, having a wife that went to an HBCU, um, is that they have issues getting funding from their alumni. Whereas when you got these big schools like Ohio States and, and all these kinds of things, Michigan's and, and so on and so forth, they have these huge endowments. They have these big time donors. They, you know, they have these big time alumni yeah. that donate, Postures. you know, millions of dollars. Right. Let's 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 use Oklahoma State as a, as a specific example, where if you remember some years ago, good old millionaire T. Boone Pickens. Gave the football program at Oklahoma State $65 million, which, which was a lot mm -hmm. of money back then when he did it, right? You don't really have that at the HBCUs. Even when you get, say, even when you get black people that have money, right? And, and again, I, I'm going to use his name and I don't want to, I don't mean any disrespect by this because I completely respect him and y'all know how I feel about hip hop and, and, and so on and so forth, right? But when when Dr. Dre will take however many millions of dollars that he had and give it to USC. Mm -hmm. Now he didn't go to USC. Where he, he didn't, didn't go. go to where he didn't go. He gave it to USC. Now I say that again without with, with no disrespect, because again, as, as a as a millionaire or as somebody who has money, I'm not trying to tell anybody where they need to spend their money. I'm not telling him you should have gave your money to an HBCU. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. You did a, you know, you, you know, you donated to a college to help the students as a, as a college professor. Hey, I, I don't, I don't find anything wrong with that. But the point that I'm making is, is that you don't get people who donate to the HBCUs in that way. They don't have the alumni who are giving millions of dollars to be able to come back and build them new facilities and, and so on and so forth. And, and let's not even, and that, that's even before you get into the ideas of mismanagement, right? Uh, misappropriation of funds that you have in these administrations and, and so on and so forth, because many people see a lot of these college administrative jobs, particularly when you get to these small schools as a money grab, because it, it's real easy to be able to do that at, at some of these places, right? Um, but it all also, I shouldn't say all, but it also goes back to racism where you have some, now remember that many of these uh, HBCUs are state schools. Jackson mm -hmm. State University, right? So mm -hmm. that means that the Tennessee state of Mississippi, state. <laughs> Tennessee State, the, the state of Mississippi ain't interested in your medica, medicological assessments, right? So the state of Mississippi will, Mississippi State, look at look at the facilities at Mississippi State. 
compared to the facilities at Jackson State. We we saw Maryland, uh, Maryland Eastern Shore, if I remember correctly, that sued and won against the state of Maryland for basically after I don't know how many hundreds of years, they found out that uh, they wasn't getting none of the money that was supposed to come to them, that it was going to the other bigger state schools like the University of Maryland and so on and so forth. The same thing in Texas this, with, with Prairie View and, and all these other schools, right, where the money is not going to the black schools that are the state schools, or at least not the bulk of it, or I should say it's not being distributed equitably, right? Mm -hmm. So that's also a major issue that they have, because there's really no way that Jackson State, that some of the high schools should look better than Jackson State. You know, I went to um, I went to University of Houston some, some years ago like um, when, when we were going to uh, on a college visit. And uh, so we went to, we saw uh, Texas Southern Man, I, man, Texas Southern was so raggedy. We thought it was the projects. <laughs> but you, but the, my point is, is that you go right around the corner from Texas Southern, and it's the University of Houston, and it looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we we need that. There has to be some equity in the and way see, that these you know, and that wasn't that wasn't what Eddie's problem was. To go for education to be well, no, I'm but I, I know I understand he, he's talking about the fans being fickle, but, but what I'm saying is is that because they don't have the funding for years, yeah. they've never been able to put a really a good a, put a good football product on the field. People, people, when we went to the Bayou Classic, we didn't go to the Bayou Classic to see Gramlin play Southern, we went to the Bayou Classic to mm -hmm. see the band. Right, because halftime is game time. We went to right? hang out. So, so, so that's also part of the issue. So they need they need to do a better job of being able to promote their sports programs, and that and and a lot of that comes with funding and advertisement. And, you know, so all of that is is part and parcel uh, uh, of the issue. So, but hey, you made the you made the point about uh, going to the school the Bayou Classic and part of the, that. For the uh, for the band. you got thirty thousand outside tailgate and restrict the tailgate party. You force them the students into the game. Well, you you talking about the bands, right? The um, yeah. But the the problem is that is what they marketed. <laughs> they market the battle of the bands. They don't market yeah. come watch the football the game. game. Right. You know, sure. so that's a that's a a, a failure on on the HBCUs in, in their marketing strategy. Um, so I mean, that's what which attributes to the thirty thousand people being outside. You know, before the game tailgating because they do want to go party. Now you're gonna get the people there to go outside. come drink and you know eat outside and party or whatever. But they don't really they don't really care about the games. You know. Uh, and that's why everybody leaves at halftime. Only twelve thousand eight thousand. Inside, yeah, I'm almost about the ticket. So, and, that, and that's a, the you made some great points. Yeah, that, that's just crazy, though. No, nope, you, you made some great points, down, especially for, about the, for the party, uh, the party in the band. Mm -hmm. Your points about the the equity uh, amongst the uh, the schools that that's a huge issue that has been going on for forever. Um, the the problem. The problem is, like I said, when when coaches like Dion and Henry, you know, bring this stuff up, for whatever reason, our community wants to to uh, dog them out for for pointing out what's going on. You know, that all they do, Ed Reed, <laughs> as much he really wanted to coach We're that team, size. he really wanted to coach that team, but doing having to do all the stuff and then seeing how stuff was managed. It, it upset him. He's like, man, I can't come down here and do this stuff, man. I'm out here cutting grass. You know, y'all up here living high on the hog. No, I ain't going to be doing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then especially so, like a, a Dion when you're used to being a part of a, you know, a first class to the point organization yes. to have to go, you know, back and, and you know, you want to help your people out, but at the same time to settle, you know, when you know that, that they should be doing better. That's kind of hard to stomach. That they, when they, and, and the thing is, is they should and they they could exactly be doing better. Could be doing. I, better. I think that's yeah. They should be, but also they could. But 
they find it more advantageous for them to stay in this particular position. Mm-hmm. When Dion, you know, was uh-huh. bringing this to the light, when Ed Reed was bringing this to the light, that's the last thing that they wanted was for folks to bring this stuff to the light because mm-hmm. now you're going to find out what it is mm-hmm. that, they, that they're doing. I, I thought that that 60 in minutes interview that Dante is talking about was a, was a great interview when he talked about mm-hmm. how, lo- how that's losing money, even if they get invited to play an SEC team. He was like, yeah, but we still end up losing money, even though they've given us $750,000. By the time we get everybody there and pay for anything, we're losing money. And that has a lot to do with the way that funds are misappropriated and the way, you know, that kind of thing. Um, these marketing budgets and, and so on and so forth that they have. Well, you and, and, for me. Well, for you and, right, and that's, for me. That, that's always the, been, the, been kind of the thing in the and sense then- that, uh, I, I think also too product. when we, when we think about HBCUs and HBU, HBCU sports, HBCU sports kind of gets the same treatment as Division three, even though many of these schools are the, many of them were Division one schools, but mm-hmm. because they see because we they've always seen the HBCUs as lesser, mm-hmm. right? Whether that's you know lesser in terms of education, which we know is not true. But they've always seen it. And, and so when you talk about athletics, if you go, if you went to Grambling, then you were seen as lesser. If you went to Jackson State, you were seen as lesser in football, even though, you know, Walter Payton went to Jackson State, even yeah. though Michael Strahan went to Texas Southern, even though Deacon Jones went to Tennessee State, I think it was. So, you know, even though you got all these Hall of Famers who have shown that HBCU football is comparable and the players are comparable, you just have to give them an opportunity. Right. And, and I think that that's a that's a big part of the issue is the opportunity. So because they have not had the opportunity, you don't have that kind of interest in sports at the HBCUs as you do at the at the big schools. Mm-hmm. You know, if you went to if you went to Illinois, if we went back up to Illinois now, even though we even those years we were terrible, we still would have had more than three thousand people in the stands. Mm mm-hmm. Right. It is. It's, it's the it's it's the way that these sporting events are seen as again. I, and I'm just reiterating what y'all are saying, but they're seeing more f- people go there more to kick it and for the party than they're actually mm-hmm. going for the game. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they have to do yep. something. They have to do something to change that. And, and I think that when you get these cats that go down there with Ed Reed from Miami with. Uh, uh, Eddie George, who went to uh, uh, Ohio State with the Ohio State. If you get a a, a prime who went to Florida State, well, mm-hmm. they went they went to places where the sports was made the priority. Mm-hmm. But that that's just not what the, what they do at, at the HBCUs. And 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 frankly, you know, I don't want to start giving a history lesson either. But that's also a way that sports sports were never marketed to us in the way that they're marketed essentially at the big schools. You know, we were sent to school, you know, black parents sent their children to school to get an education, not play sports. Mm. You ain't going to worry about no sports. You ain't going to, you know, you're going to get an education, you know? So, so at the HBCUs, they weren't really worried about that kind of stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot, a lot of stuff that has a, uh, um, be fixed. The thing, the 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 bank main thing is it got to be talked about. You can't. Yeah. Um. You're not gonna fix the problem if you don't talk about it. And that's what right. you know. One of the things that Eddie George is talking about. Um. No. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go to the NFL, and unfortunately, the NFL is being faced with a lot of injuries. So the question comes up: Who is your backup? Because we have injuries in Jacksonville, we have injuries in Cleveland, injuries in Las Vegas at the quarterback positions. Um, uh, there's uh, running back and receiver issues in this San is kind Francisco. Of a fantasy league sport. We all in here in fantasy league. <laughs> and that's who's your backup? <laughs> that's the most important thing. Jacksonville. Because, because of all these injuries, we need to find some new players to come in. I got you back. Because Dorian yep. beat me this past week, and I ain't I ain't appreciate that. He beat me bad. 
in the free agent pool. <laughs> that was so, a good win, Dory. Shout out. Man, shout out. No, uh, no, <laughs> no longer any undefeated teams in our fantasy league, by the way. So, um. Oh, but uh, by the way, so, Roddy did get the, uh, the You Suck Award this week, too. Not only did he oh, lose to Dorian, Dorian gave me that You Suck Award. Beat down. Shout out, Dorian. Shout out. Shout out. Man, my team did not come to play. But the players that can't play, um, <laughs> my man in Cleveland. Mm. Um, I'm just reading about It's popping up on uh, the ticker here on yeah. ESPN. That he's he says that he doesn't have a timetable for his return, and that's the that's the biggest issue uh, right now that we have with this. We we talking about Deshaun Watson. Oh, that the, guy. The, the biggest that issue guy. that oh, I have with Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, Watson is that Cleveland has given the fact that he has his guaranteed contract for uh, two hundred and thirty million dollars. Fully guaranteed. He has all of the power in Cleveland right now. Right? The team doctors are saying that, you know, he's medically clear. He's medically uh, able to play. However, he's saying that he has a shoulder injury, that his shoulder is still um, not right. So because, um, you know, and, and, and if you're hurt, don't play. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Correct. If you're injured, don't play. There's a difference between being injured and being hurt. Everybody in the NFL is hurt. Um, but he's claiming that he's hurt. Not injured, but hurt. He can play. But because he's choosing not to, they they got away with a win this past weekend with their backup quarterback. They weren't so lucky the week before. But they're sitting um, – what's Cleveland record, D? I know you know because you don't, you don't like him. Man, screw Cleveland. Are they three and three? I, I, I think, think they are. Two games. I think they are. Two I think they are three, three. three and two. They're three and two. They uh, yeah, they had a bye they already. So he's he's like again. He's missed like three games. He had the bye who's week. In, um, who's and in then the backup game? quarterback came and played two games. Cleveland. This is for you. And then, well, the, the backup got hurt. Hey, who's, who's in the uh, first place? Is Baltimore in first place? Thompson Robinson. But still. Baltimore is in first place at four and two. Yeah, four and yeah. two. Yeah, PJ Walker. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, PJ Walker. Yeah, he, behind Baltimore now. That was a horrible loss to Forty Nineers, by the way. Now Cleveland arguably has one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, it's not even arguably they they do. Yeah, uh, you have no time in. <laughs> They have okay. a, that one slipped in on them. They do the best defense. That one slipped in, them, but they got one of the best, <laughs> best defenses in the league. And you know, uh, Durant ain't gonna like it, but you know, they have a real good chance of actually winning the division and even winning the conference with the defense that they have. But they got to get some some quarterback play out of Deshaun Watson. And the problem was before he got hurt, he was sucking. So. Oh, uh, and that's that's I think that's again, I, I'm, I'm bringing one of Dante things in. That's my conspiracy theory uh, that he knew that he was struggling, that he wasn't doing the the the, uh, hey, the best that he not could. forget about the wide receiver. Well, who? Uh, uh, Amari Cooper and Chubb and Nick Chubb hurt, too. So Nick Chubb is hurt. Give the money to Nick Chubb is hurt. So. Oh, uh -huh. who hasn't the, showed the, the up offensively for Cleveland? Their wide receiver, man. But the quarterback got to get in the ball. That's the issue. The quarterback is not getting them the ball. <laughs> not not the starting quarterback and not the backup quarterback. So it's kind of difficult to blame the wide receivers. You supposed to when be the quarterback playing. can't throw the ball. So so my issue is my, my first question screen, is third screen. If you the man, the number one receiver. Throw me the damn ball. So my, my question to y'all is, does Cleveland have a Deshaun Watson problem? And let's not all talk at the same time. Here's the problem with Deshaun Watson, with that injury. I was giving him a chance. 
I'm just gonna say it real quick. The problem is, as Rob would say, why he's injured and not hurt is because he can't go to massage parlors no more. He can't fully recover. Mm-hmm. That's my Uh-huh. He 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 was trying to get that same massage that gorge. (laughs) That gorge, huh? (laughs) 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 That engorged that engorged gorge. Trying to get some kind of work now. And that's why he ain't fully recovered. They need to get rid of him. But you can't. That's the problem. The oldest man, well, he got. There's not going to be a happy ending in Cleveland year. for Deshaun Watson, dude. <laughs> he, he's, he's one year into happy. a five-year, two hundred thirty million dollar contract. There is no way they're going to be able to trade that contract to nobody. And you can't cut him. If you cut him, then that, all that money becomes uh, payable right then. So you're going to have a sixty so million dollar uh, dead cap hit. Get him a masseuse. And all the problems will go away. I'm telling you, get him a suit, and all his problems is going to magically go away. I, I think I think that they've had a Deshaun Watson issue since they signed Deshaun Watson. <laughs> because unless Sean, unless Deshaun Watson came in and immediately took them to play to the playoffs, Super Bowl. Well, I I, I say well, like you said, he's one year in. So I don't think Cleveland, they still need to get some people around him um, before we could think that he was just going to be able to go to the Super Bowl early. But unless Deshaun Watson could come in with that defense, because they've always known they've had a good defense. I, I mean, you know, I don't I can't stand the Browns, but, you know, they, they they've always had a good defense for a while. Anchored by Miles Garrett, who happens to be on my fantasy team. But that's beside the point. So. Um, unless he could come in and take them to the playoffs people were going to talk about this contract. Whether if he came in, now remember he hadn't played in almost two years Mm -hmm. before he came in. So yeah, he's physically healthy, but he still hasn't played, right? So his body isn't used to that pounding and so on and so forth that that it was accustomed to when he was in in, in Houston, right? Because he hadn't played. But they were going to have an issue no matter what. If he doesn't play, Oh well, we you paying him all of that money, and he's not playing. He's injured. Look what look what he what is doing to your team, so on and so forth. So it, there was going to be an issue, no matter what. I think they've always had a Deshaun Watson issue, and I think that the longer that he doesn't play, is going to be a bigger issue. And unless he comes back and plays well, it's going to be an even bigger issue. So the only way out of this is for him to come back. And at some point or another, they make the playoffs and then they go to the Super Bowl. Um, at, at some point, they go to the Super Bowl. Or other than that, this this whole five years or six years that he's going to be there is going to be, uh, you know, again, uh, a, a catastrophe. So uh, now I do take issue with your uh, – well, not issue, wrong words. Um, I'll push back a little bit on you by saying he needs uh, more weapons. At the beginning of the season, on paper, they have a, a great team on offense. Their offensive line is, is rock solid. They got one of the best offensive lines in the in, uh, AFC. But then they got Amari Cooper at the receiver. They got Elijah Moore as a receiver, Marquise Goodwin, um, Donovan Peoples-Jones. They got David uh, Njoku as their uh, tight end. Um, like I said, they, and they had Nick Chubb as their starting wide, uh, running back. So he has some weapons to to operate this offense. He is he just hasn't been good. <laughs> he has not been good. He is nowhere close to the the Houston Deshaun Watson, right? He got hurt last year. He, he, well, last year he Apparently he only played. Well, he, he couldn't play until the, he was suspended for the first None eleven games. The first they got all that right. talent. Yeah, he was suspended for the first 11 games, and then he did get hurt, you know, towards the end of the season also. And in this season, he got hurt again. So it's still, it's still, you know, not a lot of um, 
uh, data that we have for him. That goes back to our question. To What's the other question? Come now on, we're Gordon, back to man. Right? Like you said, who's your backup? If PJ Walker, mm -hmm. but that shows who's your backup. If they have quarterbacks that can't get the ball to those offensive weapons, Cleveland's in trouble. Like you said, they can't go anywhere with that contract. So for me, I'm throwing them out there to the wheels fall off. I got to get some value out of Deshaun Watson. You can't rely on P.J. Oh, Walker no. the remainder of the season or to whatever Deshaun Watson decides he's ready to go back and play. Mm -hmm. uh, but going to your point with Cleveland's defense, with that offense, what year was that? Who was that Baltimore year when uh, they had the great defense? And what was it, Trent, whoever was the quarterback? Mm -hmm. Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer. Mm -hmm. That was 2000, 2001. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the Ravens squad with Ray Lewis and them on defense. Yeah, the, the offense was just mediocre. But that's where Cleveland is. But they have a much better quarterback in Cleveland than that Baltimore squad did. So even a, a, a hurt, not injured, like you said, right, a hurt, Deshaun Watson is better than the quarterback, the 2001 quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens that went and won the Super Bowl with that uh, phenomenal defense. And that's what Cleveland has. I agree with you, Rodney. They may end up winning that division. And the, the, what's the, the, go ahead, dudes. What, what's the solution with the quandary of him, um, you, uh, the, you know, the team ruling that he's uh, able to play, you know, clearing him to play, but he's uh, supposedly hurting, you know, because they run into that, into that issue with, uh, you know, Several sports, you know, all, all the sports, as a matter of fact, running the same mm -hmm. issue. So, what, what is what's the answer to that? With the doctors, there, there is no answer to that, but the 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 issue it, it creates a bit a bad problem in your locker room because these players know that you can play, <laughs> and again, they got ailments yep. also. We all we exactly. all trying we all trying to go for this the same common goal, win the Super Bowl. We all have ailments. We all got some kind of injury that we, or some kind of pain that we're dealing with. Yeah, especially at week wow. what, what we at week seven now. Week seven, yeah. Right. We, we, we all have these, these problems. And if I know, dudes, if I know that uh, I'm hurt. going out here, my my knee hurt, hurt, my back hurt. And you got an injury, but I know you can play. But you don't come out here and play with you know. I, not, not, let me not say that. You don't come play football with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make the correction. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yes. that's, that's I'm going to be upset. <laughs> I'm going to be upset with you because, you know, I'm out here trying to give, you know, I'm giving my all and I see that you're not. And I, and, and I, I don't want to come play with you. You getting paid two hundred and thirty million dollars guaranteed? I'm gonna be pissed. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to catch that one, bro. I had to catch that one. Oh, but uh, speaking speaking of blame, so since we blaming Deshaun Watson, uh -huh, uh -huh. we're trying to hold him to his What about what about Denver? Uh huh. Who's the blame? Uh -huh. It's the one I really Ru want to talk about. Ru Ru now, I'm curious. Oh, man. I'm curious. I, I want to know what y'all think about this one. So De the Denver Broncos are off to a horrendous start. Um, you got they are, what are they? <laughs> Yeah, they suck. <laughs> they are, what is it, one in five? Let me, get, let me, let me make sure I get, the, get yeah, it correct. Yeah, they one, one in five. One in yeah. five? They yeah, are they one, one in five. five. Yeah, one in five. Oh, yeah, they won one. And uh, who did they beat? Let me see. They beat, oh, the Chicago Bears. They beat the Bears, right. They beat the Bears. Right. And, the, and the Bears had that game one and gave it away. But the question is, who is more to blame for this debacle in uh, Denver? Is it Russell uh, Wilson? Or is it Sean Payton? Dante, you got your graphic up. Go ahead and start with for me, bro. Look like he blaming CC. 
<laughs> so even before this little story came out, <laughs> you know, so even before this story came came out, y'all, I already said Russell Wilson was on the decline to the point that Russ has been having more fun making babies. Congratulations, Russ, on the new baby. You can add, I don't blame him. You married to the Sierra. That is taken away from his play on the field. I've been saying Russ has been the problem all along. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got Sean Payton there. Offense, weapons. That's Russ. We've seen the debacles. We've seen the turnovers. You can't blame Sean Payton for that at all. This is a marriage that ain't going to last. So the reason I put that that little uh, picture up is this is one of the stories that came out. <clears throat> Russell Wilson and Sierra and the wife, they basically donating money, donating a million, donated a million dollars to charity recently. That's great. Philanthropy and you know, all this other stuff. But the timing of it. So basically, like I said on there, this is how you buy our friends when you're getting criticized a lot. This is how you buy the community. Oh, yeah. Regardless of such a great guy. Russ has always been a great guy. Husband, man, all this other stuff. But his performance on the field, he is the blame for the Broncos being one and five. That's my opinion. That's why I blame. Turn it over to dudes. Uh, I, I would say Russell as well because uh... – you know, they had high, very high expectations for Russell, you know, coming over there with the franchise franchise. And it seems like uh, kind of like what we talked about earlier with the uh, Colorado Buffaloes, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Uh, not saying that he's totally, you know, focused, you know, because, of course, your your family is your priority as well. But, you know, you're getting paid millions of dollars to perform. And, you know, when you're not performing, then, you know, you have to be, you know, you, you got to be you got to take a you know accountability for that and uh he has been looking absolutely in the words of charles barkley terrible 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 so i definitely say uh it, it, it it's russ i mean you know of course peyton ultimately uh you know as the leader you know he, he has to accept accountability but uh i go russ Darren. Okay, That's so let me let me first say that I it, it 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 pains me to do this. He's in pain because some years ago, I I have been a I have been uh, on the Ru Russell Wilson bandwagon <laughs> for a long time. Okay, I was about to make a joke right there. <laughs> <laughs> I have been touched. <laughs> I. I I, I had to catch myself, too, because I was about to say something else. Uh, but anyway, I've been on the Russell Wilson bandwagon for... <laughs> You've been on the what? I've been on the Russell Wilson bandwagon for a long time, where I felt like they weren't giving him his due in Seattle. So are you uh, saying you've been behind of, Russell Wilson? Uh, uh, you know no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> But I've been touting Russell Wilson for the longest, comparing him and his, particularly his stats to Aaron Rodgers. When people were saying Aaron Rodgers was the greatest thing that ever lived, I was like, well, wait a minute. Look at these stats for Russell Wilson. He got a better completion percentage, all these kinds of things. They done been to the same number of Super Bowls. They got the same number of Super Bowl rings. Why is Russ not getting all of the credit? And then he went to Denver. <laughs> and so I think that I think it's two things going on here, and I'm going to blame both of them. I blame Russ because we saw Russ mess this up last year before Sean Payton got there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's Russ's fault, but it's also Payton's fault for not being smart enough to figure out that he couldn't fix it. And then going in there and talking all that shit and then turn around and being one in five. So, so again, I so really I'm making a joke, but yeah, I'm really putting it on Russ. This is Russ. This is about Russ. 
This is about how horrible Russell Wilson has been playing. This is about all of that. Um, but at the same time, like I said, Sean Payton shouldn't have been able to look at this. But I guess when somebody going to give you 12 million a year or 10 million a year, you'll, you'll go ahead and take take that L to put to put them dollar signs in the bank in your bank account. You know, I guess we we all do that at a certain point. But um, he should have been able to look at that situation and been like, uh, uh-uh. as much as he as an as as an analyst criticized it last year. Mm hmm. Then you're gonna go be the coach. Come on. It, it had to be because they offered you money. Because there was there was nothing that I heard you ever say when you were an analyst that would make me think that you would have gone to Denver. Come on, when 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 the Denver job came open, did any of us ever think Sean Payton was gonna take that Denver job? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So all right, so which was is the reason why I say. It's uh, it's the Sean Payton is, the, is more to blame than Russell Wilson. Um, Payton again. Payton knew the state of this team when he got there. Payton did what uh, uh, we were talking just talking about um, uh, Michael Parsons doing, you know, opening his mouth and inserting foot. About, yeah, talking about how this is the it was the worst coaching job ever done last year. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Well, Denver had a better record last year than they do right now. And mm-hmm. Peyton is supposed to be this quarterback guru. You know, he's the quarterback whisperer. Uh, he was supposed to come in and fix Russell Wilson. That's what he said he was going to do. That's why he got the job. because He said he can come in and fix Russell Wilson because Denver needed someone to fix Russell Wilson because they'd already committed so much money to him, just like Deshaun Watson. They just can't get rid of him because they owe him way too much money. They gave him this big, huge, fat contract. And they can't get out of it. So Peyton gave him a you note, know, the line, I can come in, I can fix this. Well, Peyton, you didn't fix Jack. And not only did you not fix uh the camera can't even pitch him. Not only did you not fix uh Russell Wilson, but you came into a team that had uh you no know, fairly good defense and made it one of the worst defenses in the history of the NFL, giving up 70 points in a game, you know. So yeah, Russell is not having, you know, a, a great season. Stats-wise, if you look at it, it's not really that bad. That's an understatement. <laughs> he has 12 touchdowns and four interceptions. That's not bad. You know, um, for – for, Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good. However, hey, not, you, know, you don't win, on you the, don't side, win the game on the side note, you don't win the by stats. You know, you win the games by by the points you score, and Denver cannot Since score we're points. Talking about which is a plane supposed to be Sean Payton's big thing. Go ahead, Dante. And another person we almost forgot about, who was also in the news for some controversy because he got called out for where he was drafted at. I had, had no problem uh, with my no. guy <clears throat> criticizing uh, Jerry Judy. Uh, we got to forget his name, the analyst, whatnot. That is true. We, oh, Steve we, Smith, we're in fantasy league. Jerry Judy has done nothing for anybody in the last two years of fantasy football. Yeah, Steve Smith, is, right? I had no problem. I was agreeing. Like, man, I wish more people would say the real deal on TV, like he said, calling people out. But yeah, Steve Smith got criticized for calling out a fellow uh, athlete, fellow former football player, and all this. No, he keeping it real. He's, that's the kind of analysts uh, that I like that are telling, saying exactly what we see. Our eyes don't lie. We all do fantasy. We've either had him, dropped him. Let, I'm a commissioner, your commissioner. He has done nothing for since he's been drafted with all that talent that he has. So we should also throw Jerry Judy in there as well to get out. They should not be one in five with the uh, offensive weapons that he has on that team. Sean Payton. Is the coach Sean ain't out there on the field? Those two in particular are two major problems with their offense. Judy and, and Russell. But Sean Payton is that the one that, that tandem right Sean there. Sean Payton is the one that put what the happened to Denver's together. running game? It, again, Sean Payton is I would the one Sean that Payton put the game because they don't run anymore. Sean wants to throw all the time. Which is Sean Payton? I, I, I agree, Rod. Right? He, he wants ball. to throw like he's still in New Orleans. Denver was built on running the ball. 
And yo, you're on the field. Yo, Jerry Judy comment. Yo, Jerry Judy comment is, is, is not on, on the point. field. The problem I see it with with Peyton, what he's done in Denver, is he doesn't run the ball enough for the offense that he has. Denver's always had great running backs. So if Sean Payne would get back to running the ball because Russ and Jerry Judy obviously aren't connecting, then maybe they'll start getting some continuity going with the offense, period. It all, like we always say, it always starts so, with the run. They don't run the ball. Even though they don't want to pay running backs. But but check mm-hmm. this out, though. So if, if you look at, at Russell Wilson's stats, his passer rating, 99. His, his passer rating against the Chiefs was 46.6. His passer rating against the Dolphins uh, was 83.9. All of the other games, his passer rating is over is over 100. He's had 103.7, 133.5, 107.3, 108. So for the whole season, his passer rating is 99. I so if you, he, if you he, hasn't been, he hasn't been playing bad. They just not they just not scoring for whatever reason. But again. If, like I said, he, I still say that he was bad last year, too. So It's the turnover. Look at the stats. It's the turnover. He doesn't have turnovers. He's, he's only got four. It's the turnover. got four turnovers. The, the, if, you, if you look at the stats, Russell Wilson. He has four. He has four turnovers. Turn- Russell Wilson is not having a bad come at the, 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 the problem hard. is, no, again, the problem is Sean Payton and his offense. The offensive strategy, the the game plan that he puts out there. Sean Payton is still is still trying to coach like he got a Hall of Fame quarterback got running Brees. running his system that has been in his That's system for ten years. That's how he's coaching. He's not coaching like I have a new. I got a new team. That's all he you know. did in New Orleans. But see, and that, and that's the problem with coaches. A lot of coaches come in and say we gonna run my system, and that's yeah. all we gonna do. And versus, don't adjust to the players that they have. Versus, okay, I got these players. This is what they do best. Let me my offense to 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 best match these players. They don't. He, they're not doing that. Um, your boy in Miami. Um, what's the coach? McDaniel's is that his name? I think it's McDaniel. McDaniel whatever. McDaniel. I think. I don't think it's mm-hmm. S. McDaniel. Uh, yeah. whatever his name. The Miami coach. That's what he did. He tailored his offense around uh, two and around uh, the cheetah. Yeah. To it's, make it's, sure it's, that it's he, no S. It's just Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. To make sure that they optimize the players. And then, you know, he figured out, okay, I got the fastest players in, in the league. Let's just throw the ball deep. <laughs> so that's oh, yeah. what they do. You know, and I always looked at it as, as like a. Tournament. Yeah, as like, uh, you know, Pat Riley. You know, when he had the Lakers, he had all those horses. Mm-hmm. So he had the fast break, you know, running gun showtime team. But then when mm-hmm. he moved to the Knicks, he had the big, you know, muscular players. So he went with the, you know, the bump and grind, you know, team. So, you Stop know, it's, it's about, you know, look at you. <laughs> but, you, I mean, the coach, you know, was able to, uh, you know, the coach actually did the work adapt. To, to yeah. adapt his players and create a scheme that, you know, uh, was best for them, you know, as far as winning. Mm-hmm. Not trying to make uh, what you say, uh, square pegs fitting around, round home exactly. Around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, their, their running game, their running game is terrible. And actually, it's funny because going back to what Dante was saying, they are actually when he was talking about turnovers, yeah, Russell Wilson only has four, but the Broncos on the season are minus five. Oh, are they in the turnover department? Yeah, <laughs> I got a lot of fumbles, apparently. They got a lot of something, <laughs> and then I get they got a lot of fumbles and no takeaways. We start. Denver used to always have these three running backs you could draft. They ran three running backs, which opened up the passing game. Even their tight ends, they, they, they don't. Run did the anybody ball draft or, any of their running backs? Did anybody draft any of their running backs? Half, this year? I, I know that's I the problem. No, but I drafted nope, Jerry Judy. I didn't either. Jerry Judy to Who that are point. Back? Who are Jerry, the Judy, Judy has, really? Jerry Judy has Russell. 20 receptions and 222 yards. The running the back team. left, are you? Yeah, they got um Javante, Javante Williams, uh Jaleel McLaughlin, 
so Russell Wilson is the third leading rusher on the team <laughs> with a hundred fit with 150 yards on 22 attempts. They're, they're two leading, they're two leading he running rushers. for his life. Both they're, they're two, they're two Sean leading Payne rushers. Both have, both have 190 yards. So, so really, Russell Wilson on is the tied season. for second on the team with on the season with 150 yards rushing. The, the two yes. leading rushers both have 190 yards apiece on the season. Well, Shoot, Raheem team, Mostert had that in, in one go. game. Yeah, they exactly. don't run the ball, can't run the ball. But okay, they can run the ball. If you look and, at D. And most of Russell yeah. fumbles have been when he was running out the pocket trying to make a play. <laughs> Russ has one fumble. Uh-uh. Uh but uh, D. <laughs> two running backs with 190 yards and we're in week seven. We're in week seven. So here you go. So here you go, D. They can run the ball. They just don't run the ball, which takes and me to back that question, Dorian. I don't think any of us have any of the Broncos running back. No. So again, again, like I said, they can run the ball. They just don't, which takes me back to Sean Payton because they're averaging four point nine yards a carry. Mm -hmm. They just don't run the ball, and that's probably which is Sean Payton's down. issue. Which is Sean Payton's issue. They have four yeah. fumbles as a team, and four. So they have eight, eight intercept. I mean, eight uh, turnovers on the season, which means they have uh, what three. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. The receivers are the ones fumbling the ball all over the place. Yeah, it's the receivers that's doing all the fumbling. See, back to receivers. Oh, right. Back to receivers. So, again, uh, Jerry Judy has shout one. Shout out to Steve Smith, Jane. You went to the one. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. They have no takeaways either. That's why. They, that's why they're negative D. And that's what. That's why they got seventy points put up on them. Mm -hmm. Denver used to have a stout deep. The defense has uh, has uh, three turnovers on the season, two fumbles and an interception. So, so what is so? So speaking of that, so looking at one terrible team, they recently I'm sorry, got, right. Because we've been talking about games, these terrible team, terrible team for the longest, right? Because we've been talking about this one terrible team for the longest. Yeah, we. Who, we'll get, to, we, we'll who, get to the good teams. Who, who is who is who do we find at at the top? Who do we think is at the top? Your top five NFL teams. All right, you, you talking? Dean, go ahead, tell me yours. I, I would have to go. Hold on, let me go back. Uh, I'm going to go with. At, at at number one, I'm going with the Dolphins. You see, thank you, D. You see the goal. Um, at two, don't be ashamed. At what? two, I'm going with what? the 49ers. Mm -hmm. At three, what? I'm going with the Eagles, and only I'm going with the Eagles at three, only because Jalen Hurts played so bad last week. Mm -hmm. Um, at at four, I'm looking at the Chiefs. Because the Chiefs just hasn't haven't been scoring the mm -hmm. way that they've been scoring the last the, the past few years, um, mm -hmm. you know, with the, with the Travis uh, Kelsey injury and so on and so forth. And so at five, if I had to, if I had to go with who would I say would be fifth? Well, hell, I, if I, I just go by record, I gotta I gotta mm -hmm. throw the D in there. I gotta. Throw throw the Lions. Lions in there. Mm -hmm. The Lions have been playing very, very well this season. Mm -hmm. So those would be my those would be my top five. Dante. He's deliberating. He's deliberating right now. He's we, we, we know who number we know who number one, one is because he's rubbing it. The genie. <laughs> So yeah, forty nine. Uh, nothing really changed for me, even with the losses of both the forty nines and the Philly. So the forty nineers at one, uh, Philly at two, Miami at three, KC at four, and Detroit at five. Sorry, Rod, Dallas is not in my ratings. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Go ahead, dudes. 
Well, you already know I'm going to always put Miami at number one, but they actually deserve it right now. So I, <laughs> right. I got to go with Miami number been, one. I've always been a Dolphins fan. I got to exactly. give him a pub for that. He ever ever since my mom fan. gave us those uh, cheap suicide those helmets. Cheap ass jerseys. Uh -huh. Yeah. I had a helmet at the age of four, a cheap Dolphins helmet. So, But anyway, so the Dolphins, we got them. Suicide jerseys. Um, I ain't never heard that expression before. No, life. suicide helmets. <laughs> and, uh, this is suicide helmets, and it's uh the Dolphins, the 49ers, oh, okay, the Chiefs. Who you got at number two? The 49ers. The Chiefs at number three. Um, you said them already. Got it. I got the Dolphins, 49ers, Chiefs. The uh, I go with the Bills, and then I go with D as well, the Lions. Okay, okay. I'm definitely not going with the Cowboys. You got the Bills in there. You got the Bills in there. Yeah, now, yeah. I'm going to give you, right. gonna give you a, true, a true top five. Uh, I'm not going to be biased because my Cowboys are not deserving to be in top five this week. This week. This week, <laughs> not, they're not deserving. Um, but uh, un until proven that they somebody can, can knock them off the top, uh, I gotta, I gotta keep KC at the top. They, they, they defended champs. The only team they lost to was the Lions. Uh, I gotta keep them at the top. But they do, they do have an issue at receiver D. Uh, these receivers that they're not getting any kind of separation. Uh, Mahomie has to do way too much. They did trade for uh, Mikael Hardman today. They got him yeah, back. We'll so, see how that works. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Um, but. Uh, they got it. I mean, they, they're gonna have to. The receivers got to do better. But I still keep it in number one. Number two, as much as I hate to say it, dudes, yo, Miami Dolphins um, are proven to be one of the best offensive teams in the history of this NFL. So uh, they are, are, are teetering close to that one. They're trying to trying to knock KC off. But not I better than, they're not better than the greatest show. They're not better than the greatest show. Not yet, but they close. Not they yet, close. but they close. We, we own them. We own them. Um, so I got I got them at two. San Francisco, who put a thumping on my boys, uh, are number three, even though they just lost to, uh, um, again, a team with a great defense. That's, that's all you can say. Um, and then you have uh, Philadelphia. Uh, actually... Nice. Actually, at this point, I would put Detroit four and then the uh, Philadelphia five. And the only reason for that is the, the bruh, the, the Detroit has, has been good on offense and defense. Philly offense is not clicking like it was last year. They're winning games this year, so you got to give them, give them credit for that, for winning. Yeah, that's what it's all about. But um, as the season gets longer, you get deeper into the season, uh, they're gonna, their offense is going to have to come uh, come in play. So I got uh, KC, Miami, uh, San Francisco, Detroit, and then Philly. But for the most part, we have – except Deuce has uh, – It's not a bad five. Deuce got um, uh, Buffalo in there, which I really can't fuss about Buffalo. They, they're uh, – although they're four and two, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're four and two. That's the sleeper. Buffalo they lost to the they lost to the number I, they lost to the number one. Team I forgot about Miami. Buffalo as well. The yeah. sleeper, they the lost AFC. to Miami and Kansas City. The AFC is where represent Buffalo lost to. Yeah, I think Miami Kansas yeah. City. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say Buffalo gonna have to get through Miami. No, they beat they beat Miami. No, they beat Miami. Uh, yeah, yeah, they beat Miami. Miami. Yeah, that, 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 that was the main reason I, I put them in there. But Miami got to go. Miami, I mean, Buffalo has to go to Miami. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. nobody ever wins in Miami. Not late in the season. All that humidity. All that, yeah, the humidity, man. They, they, they can't get to it. They can't get to it. All right, so that's our NFL talk. Now is the time to get to. So they, they gonna be fighting the fun the, stuff. The advantage of playoffs. Now the time to get to the fun stuff. It's that time of day. When you yeah. well, that time of that time of year, the NBA is back and it is fantastic. fantastic. 
<laughs> Y'all ain't gonna get us sued. Nah, it's preseason. <laughs> Wait, we don't have no money. So, <laughs> it's preseason. So, um, uh, but Top. even with that, pre, uh, we're, we're finishing up the last of the pre, the last week of preseason. Game start next Tuesday. Um, mm-hmm. and there's a there's a lot of new faces in new places. You had um, uh, the big winners from the off season. The Lakers did a lot of uh, roster maneuvering. They got like five new players. Uh, you had Phoenix with the addition of Bradley Beal. Um, you have uh, the trade of Dante favorite player, DeAndre Ayton, <laughs> to, um, to Portland. Mediocre man. You got you got him uh, trading to Portland. And uh, not mediocre, man. Damian Lillard not mediocre, going to man. Milwaukee. I don't know who you talking uh, about. You have Boston. Uh, Boston. Yeah, yeah. Say it. Boston did s- some wonderful moves this great, summer. Great, 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 um, great. We Boston great got guy. A, new, don't hate a new center in Porzingis. And they got a I'm new point great. guard in um, Drew Holiday. Uh, Drew Holiday. So Boston did quite a bit, Drew um, and then you had teams that that didn't really do a whole lot that should have, like Miami. Miami, you know, thought they had Dame Lillard, Lillard all wrapped up. Unfortunately, that that didn't go that route. Um, and they lost Gabe Vincent. <laughs> you lost. They lost Vincent, which is going to be a herder. Time. They lost uh, Matt Struess. Matt Struess that went to Cleveland. Oh uh, wait a minute. Got time out. Hold up. Dante called him a timeout. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Ain't all Miami lost. A prayer. No, nah, just lost his damn mind. That's what it was. <laughs> we're beating around the bush. Speaking of Miami, right? Lost their mind. What the hell is going on in Miami? Jimmy <laughs> Butler. What, that, here's my question, Ryan. I'm through with basketball till next week. Will Jimmy sport that hairdo on opening day of the NBA, or will he go back to the Braves? That's my oh, question, to, and I'm done with the, the NBA for in. today. But well, what the hell is that, y'all? I thought, it, it, I thought it, to me, I thought it was a publicity. That's part. That's where everybody left Miami. Yeah, that's you all just it talked was. about it. That's why they all left. Jimmy wanted everybody to get perms and redo the hate <laughs> video. That don't make no sense. But anyway, back to what you were saying, Rod. Speaking of Miami, uh, 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 yeah, well, Miami, did, Miami didn't do anything to help their team. They lost NBA a couple of players. Uh, my Knicks, Knicks got rid of Obi Toppin, and we got Dante Defensenzo. <laughs> Say that three times real fast. Uh, uh, that, that's really the only move we didn't. We we still haven't made that one big move to to bring the the bona fide superstar to the team. Um, but you had, like I said, you had a, a, a lot of movement. You have a lot of young teams that are um, looking for improvement, like one here in Detroit. You no, know, they're getting Kay Cunningham back. A sore Thompson, man. Hey, listen, y'all watch out for a sore, man. That that boy can ball. Oh yeah, that boy can ball, man. He 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 is. He's gonna be good. He's gonna be good, which is kind of. It, it, it kind of um, puts Jaden Ivey in a bad spot because Jaden Ivey was, you know, the the lead scorer last year. Blah blah blah. Jaden Ivey might be coming off the bench this year. Um, that might be good for the Pistons, though. It might be good for the Pistons. Um, but you have Houston. Houston got rid of um, Kevin Porter. Uh, Kevin Porter. Junior. We'll talk about that in a second. Kevin um, Porter. Junior. And but they picked up. Uh, What's his name? Um, from Toronto. Yes, draft oh, wow. Ola, Ola Depot. Uh-uh. Ooh, my man from Toronto. Um, the point guard. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, Van Fleet. Van Fleet. Yeah. Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet. Uh, he's new. They got the – and they also did one of the stupidest uh, contracts <laughs> in uh, signing my man from Memphis. Um, Dylan Brooks. Dylan, Dylan Brooks. Brooks. That, that, that signing – I. Just don't understand. They just had money to spend, and they just wanted to give it to somebody. They gave it to him. Why? I don't know. 
my hey, they could have got my address the and passed that money on to me. That's the end. Whatever. Uh, but they decided to give it to Dylan Brooks. Um, so we're gonna let that go. But uh it's gonna be an exciting season, but it's not gonna be quite gonna as exciting, not quite as exciting for one player in particular. And that's dude's favorite player. That's dude's favorite player. Fat man. Right, so right. Dude, dude. My guys, too. That's yeah, a love. Dude. That's a love we're talking about right there. Dude's your boy Harden is at it again, man. Uh, missed practice yet again today. Uh, he's going through the dispute with the Philadelphia 76ers. Shout out uh, to Jay. He doesn't want to play there. He wants to be traded. But nobody wants to trade for him. So, dudes, oh, I, I thought the Clippers wanted him. The Clippers don't want him. I thought the Clippers wanted him. They, they, they don't want to give up nothing to get him. Well, they they, they yeah. want okay. They don't want to give up nothing to give him. Get him. So, dudes, is your boy gonna bring out that fat suit? Uh. I don't think he's going to do the fat suit. I think he's going to do something original, uh, you know, more original this time. You know, he, he's he's given us a fat suit before, so he's going to give us something, you know, uh, something different this time. Um, I think the issue that they're having is uh, the Clippers are the only team that's willing to take him. <laughs> but like you said, uh, uh, they're kind of bidding against themselves. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you don't want to, because I think uh, what Philly wanted, uh, who they want, Terrence Mann, uh, mm -hmm. Bones Highland, Norman Powell, and you know the Clippers are like, why well, should we, boys. Yeah, why mm -hmm. should we give up all our uh, young talent for this guy and, when and two no first round draft picks and two first rounders? When looking at all the other teams around the NBA, nobody else even wants you. So why why should I be obligated to give up all my guys? So you should be actually willing to take whatever I give you. <laughs> right. And and, so, uh, and that's pretty much the they're issue. Stuck. Yeah, they're they're stuck and he's gonna be upset. But he put himself in this position. I don't I don't understand why the Clippers would even want him. I don't either. Even 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 to the point if uh, I mean one, okay, I get the point of nobody would think that, you know, that Philly would give them all of that, you know, or, or think that the Clippers would give them all of that for um, James Harden. That 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 fact notwithstanding, why do you want him anyway? What would he add to your team? Exactly. That you would that you would even entertain the idea of getting into trade talks for James Harden. I don't know when I look at the Clippers and I think of the Clippers with James Harden, I can't think of anything that James Harden does that would make that team better. And then when you think about it, D, the, the only thing the Clippers are missing is health. Mm -hmm. I think they, they would clearly finish in the, in the, in the top two or three, you know, somewhere in the top three, if they're healthy. Yeah. You know, with the possibility of even of winning a championship, in my opinion. So that's the only thing they're they're uh, missing. And Harden has been known to throw monkey wrenches in, uh, you know, in his past teams before. You know, and uh, why would you introduce that into the, you know, the situation when all you need is health? Mm -hmm. You got the the perfect combination of uh, veterans, uh, the young guys, talented young younger players. And Harden would definitely muck all that up. So I I don't see why I wouldn't do it if I was the Clippers. You know, the, this guy's quit on the last three teams he's been on. So I mean, what, do you think you're the magic magical team that he's not going to quit on? Exactly. So, yeah. Right. No, I, I yeah I, I, just, I again like I said I don't understand why they would even think he was the answer to anything that they have. He's not going to want to come off the bench. And then he ain't gonna come off the bench with with Russ, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And and if you put him in the starting lineup, what is what is he gonna do in the starting lineup with with Kawhi and and playoff P who just needs to play in the actual damn playoffs? Um, <laughs> exactly. But, but what what is he actually what is he actually going to do with them? Because he doesn't want to be a point guard. If if he would come be a point guard, mm -hmm. 
Oh, if James Harden came and was a point guard and was doing what he was doing, if he if he dropped his average down to about 17 points a game, 15 to 17 points a game, and came in and was going to get those 11, 12 assists as he was doing, oh, yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. And, but and we just know think he about don't it. Do I mean, he and what, want to dribble, what, dribble, dribble, step back three, and 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 shoot four, twenty-five times a game. But you don't need that with non-playoff picks exactly. and uh and Kawhi. And and, and what and scenario would, would would Harden be happy? Because he's had his own team in Houston where he wasn't happy. You know, he was allowed mm-hmm. to do whatever he wanted to do. He played with several superstars in uh, Brooklyn, and he still wasn't happy. He went over to Philly with uh, another championship uh, level squad with uh, Joel Embiid. He wasn't happy. So, I mean, right. so now you're going to introduce him to this scenario in, in uh, L.A.? Yeah. I don't know, man. He's very we'll, possible. We'll, 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 we'll see how it we'll see. We how will this see. Plays out. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, my, like you said, dudes, all, all this whole situation is his own making. Right, he could have gone to whatever team he wanted to. Right, any team he wanted to, because he he could have been a free agent, but he decided to to opt into his contract. But I'm gonna opt in because I want the money, but I still want you to trade me. No, if you, if you opt in, then you gonna play here, flat out. You gonna should, play here? Should, or that should be that. That's definitely what it should be. Yeah, and the thing is, he's gonna come up with some kind of injury or something in the next couple of days that's going to uh, allow him not to play so he can say he, he can't he can't play to make sure he, he hasn't but they say he hasn't showed up in the last three days to practices yeah. or any of the games he ain't been to practice nothing not I mean, so calls, nothing to me you're just trying to force the team's hand right but you still can't go to clippers because they're not willing to give up these parts right. for you so i mean what do you expect the team to do so right. the, the the last thing I heard, the Clippers were, were looking they, uh, were to do what is it, Marcus Morris, uh, uh, Robert Covington, and a pick swap. That, that's that's all they want to get, and Philly don't want yeah. that. Philly like yeah. well, well they they got you know they they know that they got Philly by the short and curlies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They know that they got them because nobody else wants them. They know that nobody else wants them. Mm-hmm. Nobody, so, nobody, nobody else. Which is so, which is sad, right? Mm-hmm. But it shows it shows you the state of the the league. What they think about James Harden, bro? I'm right. not gonna pay you thirty five million dollars. You do great in the regular season, but when it comes time for me to actually win a championship, you disappear. Every year, right. every I, year I in the playoffs. Uh, you know, I, we don't we don't win <laughs> in the regular season. That's, yeah. that's not where you win the championship in a regular yeah, you're season. Gonna, you're, you're gonna flop in the playoffs and you're gonna quit on the team. And you're gonna quit on my team. I I, I can't put up with it. And then you it, it's proven and we and we know this. <laughs> this is going to happen. Right. We've seen it time and time again. So <laughs> but we'll 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 see why, how why? this saga plays out as we see how the the the, the whole season will, will play out, you know, starting starting next week. Was it next starting Tuesday? Next week. As the fat beard turns. And, uh, I'm a, I must also say that uh, you know I'll get I'll be back on my hockey grind. The, the NHL season has started. It uh, has started. The Ve- the Las Vegas Knights are looking like they are picking up right where they left off. Back to back um, Last year. Back to back uh, And they they are killing. Uh, uh, Carolina, the Hurricanes are playing pretty well. The Bruins are too, and Colorado Avalanche is playing well too. But man. These these Las Vegas Gold Knights are they they on it. So we'll see if 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 they're gonna repeat. We'll see. You know, it's a long hockey season, but I'll be back on my hockey grind. Yeah, uh, you get, get back season. on your grind. You get back on your grind. Yeah, get back on my hockey grind. So uh is St. Louis doing anything? Nope. They ain't doing nothing. No. Nah. They they they, they one and oh or something. They really haven't been playing a lot yet. Hey, two eight uh <laughs> they've only played two games. Two games right. played, they won oh and one. Yeah. yeah, two games. Um but let's hope that the, the Cardinals, um, Cardinals, that the Blues actually do some stuff. Um, I, and I'm so sick and tired of hearing about the freaking uh, Detroit Red Wings. Um, <laughs> they think they're just going to be uh, go from worst to first this year. 
And I mean, they're three and one right now, so they're doing all right. So, but we can talk more about that next week. Um, we'll also talk more NBA, of course, because the season tips off again on Tuesday. Uh, talk about some NFL action again this coming weekend. We got some good college games. football. We have uh, the game of the week. Detroit plays uh, Baltimore. D's going to like that. You know anything that has to do with the uh, the Ravens and the Browns? He love that. As long as well, unless both of them can lose at the same time, that's not, that's that's what'll make me happy. Mm. Yeah, but uh, that's that's gonna be our game. Oh, I'm sorry, no, no, no. You also have uh, the Miami against Philadelphia. Uh, on yeah, Sunday that's su- that's Sunday night, ain't it? On Sunday night, yes. That game oh, yeah. is going to be um, a very interesting game. It's gonna. You know, uh, it's in Philly, so Miami has a chance to you know show the league that they are for real. Um, we got uh, well, unfortunately, the uh, WNBA um, season is now over. Congratulations again to the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Aces. Aces for winning back-to-back uh, championship. Asia Wilson was voted uh, MVP of the finals again. So congratulations to them. Uh, we also have Major League Baseball, which will be going probably by next week when we do this. They'll be in the uh, World Series. We'll be talking World Series baseball. We have NCAA football this weekend. What's the game of the week this weekend, D? Um, you know, um... let's see. Uh, the big game is uh, oh, Penn State against Ohio. O State. That's it, Ohio State, Penn State. That's the game. Uh, it's, it's, at, it's, an, it's an early game, too. It's it a new kickoff. Wow, it's, it's a new kickoff. Game. Unbelievable. They, they in the shoe, they in the shoe, too. And then uh, Tennessee plays Alabama at uh, Alabama, which is going to be a tough game. It's going to be a yeah. tough game for Alabama. That That's uh, Tennessee beat them last year. Um, they haven't beat them twice in one year for quite some time. Um, but Alabama has to come, you know, if they want to keep their dynasty going, they gotta put they gotta play a whole lot better. Well, I think it was also gonna be an interesting game. Uh uh well F- Florida State plays Duke at uh at Dope Camp Ooh. at Dope Walker. Um, That's at 7 30. Utah, Utah plays USC. Yep. Uh and then but I think what's also gonna be a very, very interesting game. Um, Washington, Arizona is State. This, this Washington, no, Washington State, Oregon. Oh, you want that game? No, I'm saying I think that that's going to be a very interesting game. The Washington State, Oregon, because Washington State have been ranked. What are they four and two? I think mm-hmm. or something Before like that. June. Yep. So, so, so it's going to be interesting, even though they're going into Oregon to play mm-hmm. Oregon. I think that that's going to be a good game because Washington State was just ranked a couple of weeks ago. So that means that they do have a pretty good team. So I'm, I'm interested to see. How that's gonna turn out, but but again, you know, I take Oregon in, in Oregon any day, but you know, we'll see how that works. I, I want to watch this Washington uh, Arizona State game. Um, Michael Penix, man, I mean Arizona State sucks, but Michael Penix is is he's he man, he's playing he's playing off the hook. He he is the truth, man. He's well, and a lot of a lot of uh, well, according to Vegas, he's the the. The leader in the clubhouse for the Heisman, he's the favorite. Okay. Uh, especially after Caleb Williams had such a horrible game last week with them three interceptions. Right. And so, um, but yeah, so we got a lot of sports we'll be talking about next week. Um, we've had a wonderful we'll time today. We will be back next week. We are back on our schedule. We'll be back. What happened to Geach? What happened to Geach? You know, man, bro, we got to fix the signal, man. Yeah, we got to fix the signal. But I'm glad, glad, uh, you know, I wanted to, you know, tell him, you know, glad to have him back, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So we can sit up here and, you know, have the home shit like we normally do. Oh, there there you go. There you go. You can talk to him. Is he back? Uh, He's coming back. You see the, you see the swirl. Oh, he left again. Nope. They're going to teach. They're going to teach. Can can we not refer to that as a swirl? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, hey, so yeah, man, we got some right there, y'all. Yeah, we saw you had some issues. My bad. We're we going to fix that. But no, nah, man, we, uh, 
Yeah, it, 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 and played with it. Right. Is <laughs> in private. As uh, you know, as we were ending the show, I missed that. What happened? Um, no, I was just saying as we were as we were you know ending the show or whatever. Uh, just wanted to say, man, uh, glad to have you back, my friend. Enjoy, you know, us all four of us being able to do this again. Uh, welcome back into the fold. W- welcome back. Do do uh, do do do. do, do uh, I'm not the camera over, man. Trying to do, 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 love, love you to love you to life, my brother. Welcome uh, back. And, uh, I, just had, I had that yeah. music ready. Right, the same old place that you left by. <laughs> <laughs> well, the names don't change. Run around. All right, see y'all. Y'all doing too much. Y'all doing too much. Yeah, yeah, we doing too much. So, yeah. but with that said, again, uh, we want to thank yeah, you everyone for for joining us again this week. Uh, we've had a wonderful time again. We just enjoyed just talking about sports. Uh, so, on behalf of D double O Z E, the Wonder Mouse, Geechee Dan. I'm Rod D. Thanks to everyone. We hope we said something that you enjoyed and you liked. But if you didn't, oh, kiss it. And guess what? We out. Don't blame it on sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. Don't blame it on the moonlight. I don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on a